Of the Great War of the Ring, many songs have been sung and many tales told. The names of heroes like Gandalf the Grey, Aragorn the King, and Frodo the Ringbearer are greatly revered, and rightly so. Yet Sauron's grasp stretched much further than the lands of Gondor and Rohan alone. And his forces might have done great evil in the north of Middle-earth, had a handful of heroes not stood in his path. Their stories, too, deserve to be told. Pay heed now to one such tale, which begins here in the town of Bree, just a few short days before Frodo arrived on his quest. Aragorn. Enadon. Well met. And in company with Andriel of Rivendell and Farin of Erebor. An unlikely trio to find walking through the doors of the Prancing Pony. You were at Sarn Ford last I knew. Do you bear news from Harbalad? Yes. Grim news. I feared it would be so. Quickly, tell me what has happened, but keep your voices low. There are unfriendly ears, even here in Bree. Three days passed. The guard at Son Ford was attacked by nine black riders. Stand fast, Rangers! We were overwhelmed, and the enemy passed into the Shire. This is worse than I imagined. I know these riders. It is from Mordor they come. Our folk could not hope to stand against the Nine together. How bad were our losses? Very bad. We tried to resist them, but they were surrounded by an aura of unnatural dread. There is more you should know. After the rout, one of the Black Riders met with an ally. A man of great malice and power. Agnaur. As our master commanded, I have stirred up the orcs of the mountains. Even now, I have a force gathering amid the ruins of old Fornost. Return at once and prepare your forces. We will have need of them soon. My orcs will be ready. These lands have known peace for too long. They will soon feel the Dark Lord's wrath. This Agandau has a force at Fornost, then our position grows all the more desperate. But why all this force against the peaceful halflings? It can't be the enemy sees them as a threat. I will say this much. There is a hobbit of the Shire who should be coming this way with a great burden. If it falls into the hands of the enemy, it will mean doom for us all. Now this hobbit is adrift on the road with enemies all around. I must find him before they do. And I need you to help me keep him safe. You are my chieftain. I will gladly do whatever you command. I, I'm a part of this now as well. Then we three are of one mind. How can we aid you? We must reduce the threat from the enemies gathered at Fornost. Travel there and do whatever you can to keep the enemy's eye turned towards you and away from the Shire. Perhaps we will have help in this task. Eladan and Elro here were in the north when last I heard. Any gathering of the enemy is certain to attract their attention. Good. You can find no better allies than the sons of Elrond, half-elven. I hope we meet. But with or without help, the enemy will be kept busy. We'll make sure of that. I have a few questions, if I may, Aragorn. Shh. Here in Bree, there is no Aragorn. Only Strider the Ranger. I don't understand why you hide your name. Surely it is a name to be proud of. The Dark Lord in Mordor would not be pleased to know that Isildur's heir still lives. 
The time is not right for Aragorn, son of Arathorn, to stand revealed to the world. For now, I am simply Strider. Yes, Strider it is. But what will you do now? I will continue the search for the Hobbit I spoke of. I've already scoured the road between here and the Shire, but found no trace of him. I fear he may have left the road, perhaps to escape pursuit. My hope now is that he will make his way here to Bree, the only safe haven for many miles. But if he does not appear soon, I will take to the road again in search of him. Should the enemy at Fornos join in the hunt, well, you understand just how grim our chances will become. I need you to prevent that. Go to Fornost. Take the fight to them. What of this man, Agendower, who met with the Black Riders? What do you make of him? Some servant of the Dark Lord, and by his name, one to be feared. His presence in the North bodes ill for us all, but I'm glad you discovered it. At least now we are forewarned. What is it about his name that tells you he is someone to fear? That name is from a language few now speak, but it was once the native tongue of our ancestors, the men of Numenor. Agendower is one of us? One of the Dunedain? Not a Dunedain exactly, but in the distant past we had common ancestors. While our forebearers rejected the lies of the Dark Lord, not all of the men of Numenor did so. Many were enticed by his promises of power. Their descendants serve him still. Many are great warriors and sorcerers, but they are consumed by darkness. They are known as the Black Numenorians, and their hatred for the Dunedain is very great. The Sagandauer may prove a foe as deadly as the Black Riders. Those things that attacked us at Sandford, those Black Riders, I've never seen anything like them before. What are they? Do you not know them? There are whispered tales and legends enough that tell of them. They are the Nine, the Ring Wraiths. Of all the servants of the enemy, they are the most feared. This Agendower, he was no wraith. He seemed like a man, one filled with malice and dark power, but a man nonetheless. But what kind of man would serve the Dark Lord? Not all the Dark Lord's servants are wraiths and orcs. There have been and still are many men, warriors and kings that walk alive under the sun, and yet are under his sway, willing or unwilling. What can you tell me of Fornost? Fornost was once a great city, the capital of the Dunedain kingdom of Arnor. It fell to the Witch King long ago. The men of Gondor and the Elves formed an alliance that drove the Witch King out, but Fornost was never rebuilt. The ruins remain a place of dread for many. The men of Bree call it Dead Man's Dyke and fear to go near. It is a perfect place for our enemies to gather in secret. So, Argandauer chose well, it seems. We'll travel to Fornost and see what we can do to upset his plans. What have we here? A stranger in town. A stranger's just what I'm looking for. Interested in a little harmless pastime? It's time to make some money from it. What sort of pastime did you have in mind? Why, nothing more than a simple game of riddles is all. I love a good game of riddles. But everyone in town has already heard all I know. I reckon I could stump you, though. I am no stranger to the riddle game. But how is money involved? It's simple. You stake some money and I ask you a riddle. If you give the right answer quick enough, I'll double your money. If you're wrong, the coins go to me. What do you say? Very well. Let's hear your riddle. First, you have to put up your money. How much do you care to wager? Remember, you stand to double it if your wits are quick enough. Um, that's a good deal of money. But nobody gets the better of old Tedder Hedrio when it comes to riddles. It's a wager. Now, remember, you'll have to answer quick. I won't give you forever with that kind of money at stake. Yes, let me hear your riddle. At night, they come without being called. By day, they're lost without being stolen. What are they? Oh, right you are. You're a smart one. Give me a chance to win it back, eh? What do you say to double or nothing on another try? Very well, double or nothing. Ask away. The more of these you take, the more you leave behind. What are they? Oh, correct. You have a cunning mind, no mistake. Go again, double or nothing? Double or nothing it is. Always running, never walking. Often murmuring, never talking. Has a bed, but never sleeps. Has a mouth, but never eats. What is it? 
That's the answer. I've been too easy on you, it seems. Go double or nothing and I'll stomp you this time for sure. Double or nothing it is. My life can be measured in hours. I serve by being devoured. Thin I am quick, fat I am slow, wind is my foe. What am I? Oh, right by thunder. I can't get anything by you. Give me one last chance. Double or nothing once again. Double or nothing it is. What is it that's so fragile, even saying its name can break it? Ah, uh, I see I'm dealing with a riddle master. More the fool I for putting up my hard-earned coins. Well, fair is fair. Here's your winnings. Ah, my thanks. Well played, and better luck next time. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Got my head in the clouds, I guess. Gloomy clouds, I'd say. Is something troubling you? Oh, no. It, it's no trouble. Not really. It's more like... Well, I'm in love. I see. And who is it that you love? It's Idona Bellflower, my childhood sweetheart. I always thought we were meant for each other, but her father doesn't like my prospects. He's arranging a match with the blacksmith. Edmund Brushwood. And she agrees with this match? That's just it. I'm not sure. I always told her how much I loved her when we were children. It was all a game back then. Then we got older and we got so much harder to say. You should tell her how you feel before it's too late. I want to tell her. I do. Look, this locket belonged to my mother. I want to give it to Idona as a token of my love. But the chain is broken. And Elman the blacksmith is the only one in town who can fix it. If I take it to him, he's sure to suspect something and turn me away. Why not let me take it to him? Yes, that might work. Elman would never suspect a stranger like you. There's one more thing. My donor's father he keeps a careful eye on his daughter and won't give me a moment alone with her. I will take her the locket and your words. Wonderful! <laughs> Just perfect! Take the locket to Elman at the smithy across the street. Once it's repaired, bring it to Idona and tell her... Tell her I love her, and that I'll do everything in my power to make her happy every day we are together. Very well. I'll tell her. And just one more thing. After you talk to her, could you come back and tell me what she said? One way or another, I have to know. Never fear. I will bring you her answer. Bree is a pleasant enough place, but the people here mistrust my kind. Welcome to Bree. You're a stranger around here. May I ask you a few questions? Perhaps. But first, tell me who you are. My name's Otto Astor, and Bree is my home. I'm worried about the future of the town. That's what I wish to speak to you about. Go ahead, then. I'm listening. We hear a lot of talk from travelers these days. Most of them speak of war and of a growing shadow in the east. The townsfolk just dismiss this, say it's far away and doesn't concern us. But I'm not so sure. You've traveled, maybe seen a few things. What's your opinion? Should we be worried? There is much to worry about, and the danger is not far off. I was afraid of that. If only I could convince others. But until then, I will have to take action on my own. What do you intend to do? I'd like to arrange for arming the town. We'll need more than pitchforks if we're forced to defend ourselves. I tried to convince a dwarven merchant to bring us weapons, but he refused. But why would he refuse? He seems convinced there's no market for weapons in this town. The city wouldn't be worth his time. Perhaps I should talk to him. It's worth a try. His name is Groff. He's selling his wares from a market stall down the street. You might still find him there. 
I will let you know what he has to say. Hello there. Ranger, are you? Let me guess. You've sprung some river to busted a blade out there roaming about the wild, and you need old Elmin to make it right again. I have a locket with a broken chain. Do you think you can repair it? Let's see it. Hmm. Looks like something might have been made in these parts. Maybe back in the old dad's day. Wouldn't expect one of your kind to have something like this. Where'd you come by? You are correct. It is breed work. I'm having it repaired as a favor to a friend. I see. Well, it couldn't be simpler. I'll just add another link. And it won't cost you but a single silver penny. There you are. Good as new. I thank you. Farewell, Smith. Welcome. It's always good to see a ranger in my shop. Are looking to buy or sell? I have some things that might interest you. I never thought to receive such a warm welcome in Bree. <laughs> oh, I'll not deny there's folk in town who would prefer that rangers stayed away. But for my part, I'm happy to see them. There's no one like a ranger for bringing you news of the world. Not to mention items of interest. We are not in the Shire, yet you are a hobbit. Why, of course I am. Bree is the oldest settlement of hobbits in the world, you know. And this is the only place you find hobbits and big folk living together. An arrangement that suits us both just fine. Have you heard any news lately? Plenty. But none of it good. Seems there's trouble away south. People are on the roads looking for new places to live. Folks around here are sympathetic, but none too eager to take in a host of strangers. I am afraid it will get worse. There are dark times ahead for everyone. Save me. But you make it sound bad. Personally, I prefer to keep my thoughts as cheerful as I may. Bree has always been a peaceful place, and I hope it will remain so. Your peace is maintained by the sweat and blood of others. You have no idea what dangers lurk a day's journey from your gates. Oh, now you're exaggerating. We here in Bree don't bother anyone, and no one bothers us. That's the way it works, don't you see? But let's not be so gloomy. Is there something I can help you with? Strong man, Bramble. You do well with us. Sounds good, but uh, I don't know. I wouldn't want to hurt no one. Not real bad, anyway. You think they care about you? I say take what you want and the rest be damned. Well, what do you want, Ranger? This is a private conversation. What was that you said about hurting people? Well, uh, it's just that this fellow and his friends are offering me a chance to, well, you know, be part of a gang. Shut your mouth, Harley Bramble. You don't have to spill your guts to every ragged vagabond that crawls in out of the wild. Who are you to call another vagabond? Watch your tongue. And what if I don't? What are you gonna do about it, eh? You, you filthy dog. Have it your way for now. But I have friends, powerful friends. You'll soon be sorry. Mark my words. This old town will be sorry. What about you? Do you want to make trouble as well? M m me? No, no, I don't. I, I don't even know him, really. He's a stranger here. Just come up from the south a week or two ago. I won't have anything more to do with him, I swear. You should stay clear of men like that. What did he want of you? Well, uh, I'm not really sure. He said there'd be changes round here soon, and those smart enough to join up with his friends would end up 
running things. He would use you and put a knife in your back when he no longer needs you. Stay clear of men like that. Aye, you're right. Folks here may not treat me the way I like all the time, but it's still my town. I shouldn't go siding with strangers. Well said, Harvey. Farewell for now. I'm not doing anything wrong. Honest, I'm not. Well now, if you don't mind my saying so, you don't look much like a Brelander. Is there something I can do for you? I have a favor to ask of you. A favor? What sort of favor? I would like you to bring a store of weapons to sell to the Bree folk. <laughs> You're pulling my beard. Weapons for these folk? They wouldn't know which end of the sword to hang on to. I might as well try selling shoes to hobbits. They may have had no need of weapons in the past, but these are unsettling times. They must be able to defend themselves. I'll not deny times are growing dark. There's trouble all around. But you'll never get these folks to believe it. Life's been too easy for them for two. Not everyone is blind to the growing threat. It was one of the townsmen who sent me to ask this of you. There are others who are worried as well. It'll take more than a few sensible folk to make it worth my time. These people are simple and peace-loving. It's plowshares they want, not swords. Don't let their past prevent them from preparing for their future. It would be wrong to leave them defenseless. Hmm. You're right, of course. Maybe it's not such a bad idea after all. At least I'd have no competition. All right, I'll do it. Excellent. How long will it be before the arms arrive? Some time, I'm afraid. It's a long trek to the Blue Mountains and back. Not to mention I'll have to convince my kin I've not lost my mind. Probably three months or more, I reckon. What can you tell me about the Blue Mountains and your people? The Blue Mountains are prosperous enough, although we find more iron than gold. We rely on iron working for our livelihood. That's why I'm here selling tools to the Brelanders. I will let them know when to expect you. Safe travels, Grom. Hello, is there something I can do for you? I am told you are pledged to the blacksmith. How do you feel about that match? What? Is my betrothal a matter of such importance that total strangers wish to discuss it with me? I have a message which I cannot deliver without knowing your feelings. This is all very mysterious, but if you must know, Elmwood Brushwood is a decent man who makes a good living, and he has my father's blessing. You have not answered my question. I asked how you feel. Everyone says that in time we will grow to love one another, but Elmond does not have my heart. If that is the case, I have something for you. From Rowley Appledore. A gift? From Rowley? But I thought th that is he. I I'm sorry. It's it's just so unexpected. What is this gift? This locket. It was his mother's. Oh, it's beautiful. But I don't understand. Why is he giving me this now? He also wished me to convey his love for you. Rowley loves me still. We were so close when we were children. But I thought he had forgotten all that. He seems quite sincere. But this is wonderful news. Wonderful. Rowley's always had my heart. Always. The poor, simple, wonderful fool. Your father will not share your feelings, it seems. Leave my father to me. He may not be pleased with my decision, but I promise you he'll come round. He always does. Well then, Rowley is awaiting an answer. Oh, please tell him I love him, and that we will find a way to be together always. A welcome message, I'm sure. Goodbye, Idona. You're back! Did you speak to Idona? What did she say? I'm dying to know. It seems you have won her heart, Rowley. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful! I can't thank you enough, my friend. I have but, but, wait, hang on. Oh, I completely forgot. Edmund must have charged you something for that repair. I owe you for that and for your trouble. Here, take what I have. I wish it could be more. Thank you, and good luck to you both.
Did you speak with Groff? What did he say? Will he bring his weapons? I managed to convince him. You will have your arms. Excellent. My only concern now is the time it will take. What if we need to defend the town before the dwarf made goods arrive? Maybe you could help me with that as well. How so? I can tell by your gear that you are no stranger to a fight. If you should have occasion to, well, let's say, recover any weapons you don't need, bring them to me and I will pay you for them. I will bear that in mind. Farewell. even now be under the gaze of unfriendly eyes. Well, we came to provide a distraction for Aragorn, and what better way to do that than walking in the front door? Let's be about it. Atten! Attack! For Erebor! For the Longbeard! You face a ranger now!
like another ranger has hidden some supplies here. Everyone unhurt. These ruins are not sound. We must find a way out of these pits. These goblins are small, but deadly all the same. At them! Attack! Fall before me, Fiend! Oh, you're caught between the hammer and anvil now! You face a ranger now! My beard, that was a close one.
Hidden Duna Dine Cash. Creature could be making those cries. I thank you, friends. Without your timely arrival, my death would have been slow, but certain. No need for thanks. We are happy to cheat the goblins of their sport. But who are you? I am called Bellaram, 
My home is in the Misty Mountains, and I serve Gwaihir, Lord of Eagles. Who is it I have to thank for my rescue? I am Eridan, one of the Dúnedain of the North, and my companions are Andriel and Farin. Then I am indebted to you, Eridan of the Dúnedain, and to your friends. How did the goblins manage to capture you? I was careless, and the goblins were well prepared. They used war machines to fire bolts that exploded around me. I was stunned and fell from the sky. When I came to my senses, I was bound and helpless, even as you found me. What brought you here to Fornost? I often range far across the lands of the north, gathering news for Gwaihir, my lord. When I saw activity here in long-abandoned Fornost, I grew curious and flew lower to investigate. We hope to find allies here. Have you seen any elves in the city? Not long ago, I heard the clash of arms and the shouts of goblins nearby. I assumed you were the source, but it is possible there are other allies in the city. I cannot say where they might be now. Did you see any sign of the one who leads this force? I saw a tall man, heavily armored. The goblins obeyed his commands. Who he is, I cannot say, but he had an aura of menace, like one tainted by the shadow. Agenda, it must be. You know this man? He is a servant of the Dark Lord. We must find him and destroy him if we are able. I will assist you, but it will be perilous. The enemy has positioned war machines upon the inner wall. They limit my ability to fly freely. If we could reach the top of the wall, we might be able to destroy the machines. Beyond those doors, you will find a passage and stairs leading up to the wall. The machines are certain to be heavily guarded. We have little chance of surprising the goblins with but one way to approach. I will take to the air and draw their fire. If we are fortunate, that will allow you to gain the top of the wall unobserved. We cannot let you make a target of yourself. I am better prepared now. They will not find it so easy to bring me down a second time. Very well. Let's go. My messenger! I have wonderful news. Rowley and I are to be wed in spring. Didn't I tell you my father would come round in the end? That is good news. May you both be happy. Farewell, lady.
I'm not doing anything wrong. Honest, I'm not. Welcome. I think more folks are starting to believe the dangers I warned of are real. But it's no wonder, really. What with the Black Riders appearing on our streets and attempted murder right here in the inn. Black Riders entered Bree? Yes, but Barleyman can probably tell you more than I. Your price is only a fraction of what I could get elsewhere. I know, but it's all I can afford. I wouldn't blame you if you took your business elsewhere, but I hope you won't. We are in need. Pony, what can I do for you? Is Strider no longer in town? He left town with a party of Shire hobbits that came in just after you left. Seemed like an odd pairing, if you don't mind my saying so. They were strange folk, these hobbits. Strange? In what way? Well, for one, they seemed to be in some sort of trouble. Even before they showed up, we had this, this black cloaked rider come round asking after hobbits from the Shire. He put a chill into my veins that one evening. A black rider? What became of him? I can't say for certain, but more of them turned up after the first. They came into the town the same night as the hobbits. It was fortunate your friend Strider kept them hidden that night. Not long after, five of them broke down the gates and rode through the town, howling like a storm. Last anyone saw, they were traveling east. Thank you, and goodbye. Over there! 
The wall is clear. Well done. I am free to fly unhindered. But there are others fighting in the city. They may need our help. Could it be Elrond's sons? I cannot say. But they move with stealth, and they leave a trail of slain enemies in their wake. That sounds like Eladan and Elro here on both accounts. They are likely heading for the Citadel, just as we are. Then let's push on. Maybe we'll meet up with them. I will shadow your movements from above. In open ground, I can strike against our foes. Call on me when the need is great. Welcome. What can I do for you? Welcome. Thank you. 
little in the way of art or gardens in view. I wonder if the towns of men are always so decent. I have a lot of work ahead of me. If I'm going to convince Idona's father, I'll make a good match for his daughter. I've got plans, though. I'll find a way. May the stars shine upon you both. Farewell, Rowley Appledore. Welcome. I think more folks are starting. seem to have no notion of the dangers that threaten them. Welcome. I think more... Welcome. I think... Welcome. What can... Look there! It's Eladan and Elro here! Ah! The Elf Twins can give us a hand! Quickly! We must follow after Eladan and Elro here. They may need our aid. will prove useful. <laughs> if I will take this. use for 
this. This is just what I needed. They have a powerful war machine. Not yet. Bellaron could assist us here. Just what I needed. Ah, the very thing I need. something I can make use of. Roll back.
Someone's coming. Besting a troll in combat? That is no small feat, friends. It would appear that we are on the same side. Perhaps we could be of assistance to each other. Allow us to offer a hand. Andriel, is that you? Well met, my friends. We were told we might find you here. I am truly glad to see you. Allow me to introduce my companions, Eridan of the Dunedain and Farin of Erebor. I present to you Eladan and Elrohir, the sons of Elrond Half-Elven. It is a pleasure to make the acquaintance of such skilled and courageous warriors. Was it the three of you, then, who freed the Great Eagle? Ah. So you know about him, do you? We were spying on the goblins from outside the city when we saw him captured. We made our way into the ruins thinking to rescue him, but it seems you three arrived first. Yes, Belaram is his name. That was well done. But what brings you to Thornost? We were with the guard at Sarn Ford when we were attacked by black riders out of Mordor. We brought word to Aragorn in Bree, and it was he who sent us here. That is grim news. But I fail to see why Aragorn chose to send you to Fornost. The Black Riders are in league with a man called Agendauer. It is he who commands this force. I begin to understand. Aragorn wishes you to distract Agendauer. Yes, that is our mission. But now that we have joined forces, we can do more than distract him. Let us cut the head from this Serpent of Sauron. But Agendauer is a dangerous foe. We may need a stronger force if we hope to defeat him. If we can take Agendauer by surprise, we may not need an army. Surely we are strong enough to defeat one man, even if he is a minion of the Dark Lord. But we don't even know where he is. He is certain to be in the Citadel at the heart of the city. We must attempt to make our way there. No easy task amid these crumbling ruins and a host of orcs and goblins will seek to bar our way. If we are separated, press on toward the Citadel. There we will regroup for our final attack. Be on your guard. Agendauer wields dark powers. I only hope our combined strength will be enough to overcome him. Follow us! Need more time.
Ruins of the enemy pathways. We will search this way while you three try another route. We will meet at the Citadel, if not before. I see something over there. What manner of creatures are these? Can they actually be so enamored of the dark Hazard! that they Attack! would willingly destroy themselves to strike at their enemies? This is troubling. dark magic to shield themselves. We must close with them.
Cal to get it open. On your guard! There are yet more of them! Strong odds! We'll need to work Take together! Side. Take refuge here! I will shield us from their arrows and bolts! There's a lever up there, but I don't see a way to reach it. They found us again. Here they come! Ah! Let us stand and fight together! Attack! Fall before me, fiends! The 
Welcome. I think more. You've been very helpful. I think we have a good store of arms now. I know you haven't helped us for the money, so I want to show you my appreciation. I found this amulet many years ago on the Barrow Downs. I've always suspected it has some special virtue. Maybe it will be of use to you. Good luck to you. Bree is a pleasant enough place, but the people here mistrust my kind. There's a lever here. Our path is now clear. can turn their own weapon against them. Attack! 
is open at last. Let's head on to the Captain, Citadel. Attack! Rarimar! There's the Citadel, just up ahead. We're not there yet. Take those. There's a mounted crossbow over there. Here, form up my me. I'll save you! Here, yeah, to me, I uh. need healing. for long. Bring down the fire bearers first. Their archers have the high ground. Attack! Let none escape us!
continue on. Agandawa must be within, then that is where we must go. The way is barred by a powerful magic ward. Can you break the spell? Perhaps, but it will take time and concentration. You'd best get started. We will guard you while you work. been removed. Come quickly! The doors are open! Here we must separate for a time, my friends, for I cannot follow you within those narrow halls. Will you depart for your home, Belleron? No, lady. 
It would be faithless of me to say farewell while friends' lives yet hang in the balance. I will await your return. It may be that I can prevent reinforcements from following you into the tower. We'd best hurry. The elves are getting ahead of us. May fortune favor you all. Citadel. I'd say we've been a pretty good distraction. Welcome! Welcome! We've reached the Citadel. I'd say we've been a pretty good distraction.
happening out there? Invaders. How many? Not many. They freed the eagle. Fools. Now our presence here will be revealed. Is this the best your rabble can do? They must be great warriors. Bloody-handed elves. Or some of those filthy tarts. I don't care. Find them and kill them. Call out your guards. Don't let them escape. Call my guard and be quick about it! should have fled Middle-earth with the rest of your cowardly kin. Why, you still had the chance. We flee from nothing, least of all you, lackey of Sauron. Ah! Fools! I am the right hand of Sauron. I will see your precious Rivendell burning, and your mongrel father hauled before me in chains. You will do nothing. Your plots end here. My work is only just beginning. Do you think you two alone can hope to stop me? They are not alone. Don't look for your guards. They won't be coming. Fornos means nothing. You haven't won anything here. He's escaping! I cannot hope to follow him now. But I can! Sauron! This 
is no natural storm. I can no longer see him. It is no use. He has escaped us for now. Yes, but you cannot be blamed. It was bold of you to go after him alone. Indeed, though, perhaps it was not the wisest course. He summoned a storm. How can a mortal man wield such power? Sauron is a master of dark sorcery. He has taught these arts to mortals before. It may be that Agandau learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. It's worse than just Agandau. There were orcs down below that cast spells against us. I faced more than my share of orcs, but this is the first time one's ever used sorcery against me. This could mean Agandaur has passed his knowledge on to others, even to the orcs. That would be a great evil, even for one such as he. What was that beast he rode upon? I cannot say. I have never seen nor heard of its like before today. Nor have I. Perhaps the Dark Lord has bred these creatures as a challenge to my folk. I can only wonder how many of these beasts he has placed at Agandar's command. We must find him. Have you any idea where he might go from here? It is difficult to say. It might be anywhere. The Ettenmoors, Wilderland, the far north. He may even return to Mordor. That seems unlikely. He made threats against the north. Yes, you are correct. I fear he has the means to carry out those threats. So what should be our next move? For my part, I would gladly join in the hunt for Agandar. Yet, I have my duty to consider. I must return home to inform Lord Gwaihir of all I've learned here. Must you leave us, Belaram? Your aid would be of great value in our search for Agandar. Were I free to choose my own course, I would remain with you. But I am sworn to serve Gwaihir. I must return to him. Who is this Gwai here you speak of? He is the Lord of the Eagles of the Misty Mountains. I am surprised you do not know his name, for he is deep in the councils of Elrond, your lord. But perhaps you know him only as the Lord of Eagles. Ah, of course, Gwai here the Wind Lord. I have heard his name in many tales. As his vassal, I am duty bound to return to him. He must be informed of everything I have learned here. Your duty to your people must come first. Good luck to you, Belaram. Yes. Farewell, wherever you fare. Till your Aerie receives you at your journey's end. My thanks! Commend me to Elrond, your father, and farewell. As for us, I believe we also have a duty to inform our allies of all we have learned. For me, that means a return to Sanford. Halbarad, my captain, will be eager to hear our news. Aye. The Shire could still be in danger. We might be needed there. Should you find Halbarad has no pressing need of your services, I would urge you to make your way to Imladris. We may have need of your strength and resourcefulness before long. But what of Aragorn and the Hobbit he was seeking? The Black Riders may well be pursuing them. Should we not try to help him? If Aragorn has found this hobbit, it is certain they will both be bound for Imlantris. He is several days ahead of us now. We shall look for him as we go, but Aragorn is resourceful. I suspect he will arrive at Imlantris before we do. What of the orcs and goblins still here at Fornost? Should we not deal with them? Goblins are only a threat when they have a strong leader to drive them on. With their chieftain slain and Agandar fled, those few who remain in Fornost will soon fall to squabbling among themselves. And we may find more important tasks awaiting us elsewhere. Very well. We will depart for San Ford. Farewell, my friends.
I have received word through the Sons of Elrond and the Wandering Companies telling of your valor at Fornost. You are to be commended for your skill and daring. We had yet to make account of the dead that Mike you sent us to Aragorn, but I had hoped there would be more survivors. Some few are away patrolling the borders of the Shire, for even now we must attend to our duty. But sadly, many of those who were wounded in the attack died within days from some evil ailment. Even those whose wounds seemed minor. Perhaps Solana can tell you more. There are so few rangers left here now, it might be dangerous to remain. What if the Black Rider should return? Perhaps it would be best to retreat. That would be the wise course if I thought they would return. But I am certain they did not come this far merely to slaughter a small band of Dunedain. No, I will remain here with the few we have left. We cannot hope to fight the enemy, but we still have eyes and ears to gather news of their movements. Have you heard anything of Aragorn? He was desperately searching for a certain hobbit when we parted at Bree. All I know is that Aragorn is rumored to have left Bree in the company of four hobbits of the Shire. I can only assume one of them is the hobbit he was seeking, and that they are now bound for Rivendell. There is worse news, however. On the night before they departed, the Prancing Pony Inn came under attack by unknown assailants. I am ready for whatever new orders you may have for me. Andriel and Farron have also volunteered their aid. How can we best be of service? Truthfully, I would be happy for the extra hands. But it is clear to me that you three have a greater destiny. You may be needed more urgently elsewhere. Then what would you have us do? I advise you to make your way to Rivendell. Aragorn will be eager to hear news of Agendower, and he may have other tasks for you to perform. For now, the enemy seems to have turned away from the Shire. Travel to Rivendell? Very well, but it is a long journey. We'd best get started. Perhaps there is something you can do for me on your way. You have but to name it. I sent two of my rangers, Kalarin and Lewin, on patrol along the Brandywine River. They should have returned long before now. I am growing concerned for them. They are both seasoned rangers who have served many years in this region. We can be certain they have not simply lost their way. From which direction would you expect them to come? They were to follow the Brandywine north as far as the Great East Road and from there to make their way back by passing through the Barrow Downs. The Downs are just north of our position here. Then we'll make our way north by way of the Barrow Downs. Perhaps we will discover some trace of them as we travel. You have my thanks. I know your skill as a tracker, Aradan. If Lewin and Kalaran made it as far as the Downs, you should be able to pick up their trail. Farewell, and safe travels to you all. You're soon to be off again, are you? Well, I have a few things among our supplies that may help you on your way. Perhaps a few extra arrows for your quiver, and a few of Solana's healing drafts may come in very handy as well. Take a look. First, give me your thoughts about what happened here. The attack of the Black Riders. Ah, well... I've seen many things in my day. Evil in many forms. But I've never seen anything like we faced that day. So many lost. It's hard for an old man to see so many younger men slain. I wish I could... Well, there's nothing to be gained from wishing. But there is something to be gained from action. We must have our revenge. Revenge? That's all well and good. But those men will still be dead, won't they? Better that we do whatever we can to save others from their fate. Yes, you're right, of course. But it still burns to see good men fallen and their killers unpunished. Those men died trying to protect those who can't protect themselves. No one can ask for a better ending. But you, you still live. And there is a long and dangerous journey ahead of you. You must be prepared. 
Take a look at the stores I have on hand. Are you in need of some? Aradon, my friend. It's good to see you alive and well. I'll admit I wasn't certain we'd meet again. But then everything seemed grim after the Black Riders broke through our guard. It was days before I could shake off the feelings of despair. I'm glad to find you all still safe. How have things been here? Well enough. Quiet. We've seen no sign of the enemy since the attack. It's as if they have lost interest in us. Or perhaps we're beneath their notice now. But from the look of your gear, you've seen a thing or two since last we met. Are you in need of repairs? Farewell, Haldor. You hurt. You look well enough to me. If it's healing drafts you need, you can get them from Maradon. I have a dying man on my hands. Young Elrond is dying? But why? What's wrong with him? Wrong? I don't really know. His wound is minor, yet his life is slipping away. I fear he is suffering from the Black Breath. The Black Breath? What is that? It is some power wielded by the Black Riders, the Nine Nazgul. Their victims are stricken senseless, and without aid, they soon die. I've already lost three men to this curse. Eleron is the only victim who yet lives. But there is still hope. What can we do? <sighs> I hardly know. Drawing an arrow, stitching a wound. These things I have done countless times. The Black Breath is something I know only from the old rhymes my teacher taught me. Tell me this rhyme. Maybe there's some clue there. It was years ago. Let me think. I believe it ran something like this. When the black breath blows, and death's shadow grows, and all lights pass, come a Thalus, come a Thalus, life to the dying. That's all I can recall. What is this a Thalus the rhyme speaks of? An herb, commonly known as King's Foil. It has little medicinal use, though some find it comforting for headaches and other small complaints. Then there is no harm in trying it with Aleron. Do you have any of this Athelus? No, I have none. You'll have to forgive me for neglecting to lay up a supply, but you see no one bothered to tell me that the Nine Ring Wraiths would rise up from ancient legends to trouble us here. If I had a Thalus, don't you think I would have used it by now? It must grow wild somewhere. I am willing to search for it. Perhaps you could find some at that. The plant is not native to Middle-earth. It was brought to these shores from lost Numenor, and planted in the lands where our ancestors used to dwell, including the Borodans to the north. How will I know a Thalus should I come across it? The plant has many long, smooth leaves, but you might best find it by its scent, a sweet, pungent fragrance. The Barrow Downs hold precious few such plants. My road leads to the Barrow Downs. Should I find a Thalus growing there, I will return with a supply.
I'm told the Barrow Downs are filled with ancient tombs. What do you know of them, Elf? These tombs were made by the fathers of men in the depths of time. They were sacred to the men of Arnor, and they too buried their dead here, until their kingdom fell to the Witch King. These hills have an evil reputation in the folklore of the Shire and Bree. The rangers travel here often without incident. Still, I feel a sense of unease. We must stay alert. Well, Ranger, what have you found? Rangers camped here perhaps two or three days past. These footprints would easily be those of Lewin.
obvious now, you fell the missing rangers. As long as there is a chance they still live, I won't give up the search. Looks like there's writing on these stones, but it's very warm. Can your elven eyes make it out, Lord Master? Faintly. It appears to be a list of names, many of them scratched in haste. They are identified as soldiers of Cardalon. The men of Cardalon were among the last of my ancestors to hold out against the evil of the witch. The histories tell us that they used the Barrow Downs as their last refuge. I'm not attacked! It would be fitting if we were to drive the whites from this tomb.
shut now!
I would be surprised to see you've returned so soon, but Solana told me you were seeking a remedy for Eleron. I'm glad you've taken the time to do this. Quickly now, take the Athalus tour before it's too late. Let me see what you have found. Yes, this is indeed Athalus. Now, according to the old law, all I need to do is add these leaves to boiling water. Let Eleron breathe in these fumes. Solana. And Eridan as well. How can this be? I thought you were all slain. But no. That was only the dark voices in my dreams. Yet, it was not all a dream, was it? I'm afraid not, but don't concern yourself with that now. You are safe. Solana has saved you. Mine was the knowledge, but Eridan found the herb that saved you, at great risk to his life. Then I owe you my life, friend. Please, let me show my appreciation. My weapons were made in lost Numenor in the distant past. They've been in my family for generations. I want you and your friends to have them now. What do you know of Numenor? Numenor was the land of my ancestors, a great civilization, but it sank beneath the sea thousands of years ago. Only a handful of survivors, led by Elendil, escaped here to Middle-earth. And who was this Elendil? A mighty lord of Numenor. It was he who founded the realms of Arnor and Gondor long ago. Our chieftain Aragorn is his heir. Enough, lad. Now is not the time for history lessons. You must rest. Yes, I am tired. But you, my friend, will you accept my gifts? A noble gift? Thank you. Rest now, and recover your strength. Farewell to you both. I found these materials amid old kingdom ruins. I believe they might be used to make a fine weapon. These are relics of our ancestors, made in a time before the lore of Numenor dimmed. Hmm. If I had the use of a good smithy, maybe I could make something of worth from these, but not here in the field. If you're bound for Rivendell, you'll find skilled smiths among Elrond's folk. Try taking these to one of them. Farewell, Haldor. Are you in need of supplies?
Beware the swelling stones!
Are you in need of supplies? supplies. Does your gear need rip? Think he's alive? Come on then, Lewin. Time to awaken. Wake up! No strength can prevail against this sickness. What good are swords in the face of this plague? 
Well, it wasn't the name of... E Eridan? Yes, it's me, my friend. I... have been dreaming. How did you end up in this darksome hall? I recall we were making good speed through the Downs, eager to return to our friends. But a fog began to rise and it became hard to find our way. We began to hear voices calling to us, as if from far off, miles underground. And then, the dead were all around us. We, we fought them, but then I felt the presence of something else, something stronger, more evil. I saw a shadowy figure seize hold of Kalaran and he fell senseless. Then it came for me. That is all I remember. But if I was brought living into this tomb, then the same would be true for Kalaran. We need to find him. That's what we intend to do. Are you strong enough to join us? Yes. I think I can keep up with you. Let us press on at once.
sorry about what happened to your comrade, Boone. Are you going to be all right? First Black Riders, now Barrow Whites. This is more than men should have to contend with. <sighs> but where there is life, there is hope. Thanks for your concern, but I will be all right. I owe it to those who have fallen to go on as best I may. We've gathered some rich treasures from this tomb. You certainly deserve a share. Thanks, but it would only serve to remind me of all of this. You keep what you have won. The Barrow Whites have been driven out, and the way back to the surface is clear. You should be able to make it on your own now. Good luck and goodbye, Gwen. Andriel, welcome home. My sons informed us of your actions at Fornost. Such courage and resolve brings great honor to our household. I am grateful for what you did at Fornost. If Agandar's forces had joined in the hunt, there is little chance that I and my charges would have made it here to safety. I am glad to have been of service. Will you tell me what befell you after we parted? I found the hobbit Frodo Baggins and his companions, and led them through the wilderness, hoping to throw the Nazgûl off our trail. All the same, five of them attacked our camp at Weathertop, and Frodo was badly wounded. After that, the enemy pursued us almost to the hidden pathways of Rivendell itself. We never would have saved Frodo, except that we had the help of Elrond and his people. How were you able to escape them? The river of this valley is under the power of Elrond, and it will rise in anger when there is need to bar the ford. As the Black Riders attempted to pursue Frodo across the river, they were swept away in a great flood. Of course, I had forgotten Elrond's mastery of the river. Were the Black Riders destroyed in the flood? No, ringwraiths cannot be so easily destroyed. But we can hope they were unhorsed and uncloaked. Without their mounts, they are crippled, and will be forced to make their way back to Mordor as best they may. Hmm. I believe I know the nature of these Black Riders. Will you confirm my suspicions? What are they? They were once mortal men, great lords, warriors, and sorcerers. They were ensnared by Sauron, who lured them with promises of wealth and power, and gave to them rings of power. But they were deceived, and quickly became slaves of the Dark Lord's will. They ceased to live as men long ago, and now exist only as wraiths. They are shadows, invisible and immaterial, given shape only by the robes they wear, yet their power to inspire terror and their mastery of dark sorcery makes them terrible foes. It seems exceedingly strange that the most dreadful servants of the enemy would pursue a halfling in this manner. I think it is time we told our newfound friends what they have gotten themselves into. Mithrandir, I am happy to find you here, my friend. Indeed. I am happy to find myself here as well. For like you, I have traveled a long and dangerous road to reach Rivendell. But I think your friends may know me better as Gandalf. Are you going to explain all that has happened, Gandalf? I'm eager to learn why the enemy sent the Nazgul into the Shire. You have more than earned such an explanation. Tell me, what do you know of Isildur's Bane? I know nothing of this. What is Isildur's Bane? Isildur's Bane is the Ring of Power, forged by the Dark Lord Sauron long ago. Into this ring, Sauron bound the greater part of his power, but it has been lost for many hundreds of years. Why did Sauron make the ring? It was part of a grand deception. Sauron taught the elves the art of making rings of power, but secretly he planned to make one master ring through which he could control all the lesser rings and those who wore them. 
Why would our folk ever agree to learn the lore of the Dark Lord? Did they not know he would betray them? At that time, Sauron was still able to assume what form he wished. He came to the elves in a fair guise and played on their greatest desire, to preserve and protect what they loved in Middle-earth. Eager for knowledge, they learned from him and made many rings. The greatest of these were Narya, Nenya, and Vilya, the three rings of the elves. When Sauron forged the One Ring, the elves were instantly aware of his betrayal. The Dark Lord made war on the elves and seized the lesser rings. These he gave freely to dwarves and men, those same men who became the Nazgûl. To Sauron's dismay, the dwarves proved less easy to dominate. By force, he took back three of these dwarven rings. The rest were consumed by dragons and destroyed. The elves were very hard-pressed, and Sauron's dominion spread over the greater part of Middle-earth. What saved the elves from final defeat? The coming of my ancestors. The Dúnedain, led by Elendil the Tall, a lord of Lost Númenor, came to Middle-earth seeking new lands in which to dwell. They were the sworn enemies of Sauron and staunch allies of the elven king, Gilgalad. An alliance was formed between elves and men, and together they drove back the armies of Sauron. In the end, Gilgalad and Elendil threw down Sauron at the cost of their own lives. What became of the ring after the Dark Lord was overthrown? It was claimed by Isildur, Elendil's heir. It was he who cut the ring from the Dark Lord's hand with the hilt shard of his father's sword, Narsil, broken in the battle. I counseled him in vain to cast the ring into the fires of Mount Doom, near at hand, but he would not heed me. Why would Isildur not seek to destroy it? It was a work of the enemy. He must have known it was tainted by evil. The ring has a power over the minds of all who come into contact with it, filling them with a desire to claim it as their own. This temptation is all the greater for those who already possess a measure of their own power. Isildur was a mighty lord, and the lure of the ring was more than he could resist. He would not suffer the ring to be destroyed, thinking perhaps that he could use its power for the good of Middle-earth. Yet it is a work of the enemy, and in the end it corrupts all who possess it. And that decision led Isildur to his doom? Yes. The ring betrayed him to his death and was lost, passing out of all knowledge for many long years. But it still exists. And I would guess it has reappeared. Quite right. After lying lost and nearly forgotten for centuries, Sauron's ring has once again been found. The Hobbit? The one Aragorn rescued? He holds the Ring of Power? And this explains why the Nazgul have come north. But what will become of the Ring now? There is no safe resting place for the Ring. Not even here in Imladris. It is a danger to all who come near to it. There is only one course left to us. The ring must be destroyed. To do so, the ring will need to be cast into the same fires from which it was forged. Those of Mount Doom, in the land of Mordor. The hobbit, Frodo Baggins, has agreed to take it there. Surely you don't intend to send him there alone? No, certainly not. A fellowship will be formed. A fellowship of nine. Nine walkers set against Sauron's nine black riders. Among this fellowship will be representatives of all the free peoples of the world. Elves, dwarves, and men. Edegorn and I will both be going. We have proven our worth in battle already. Let us add our strength to this fellowship. The hope of the Company of the Ring lies in speed and secrecy, not in strength of arms. Their number must be few. Even were we to send a thousand such warriors on this journey, it would do little more than arouse the wrath of the Dark Lord. We are at your service. Tell me what we can do. The Nazgul and Agandaur are dire threats. We must learn all we can of their movements before the Fellowship is to depart. Scouts will be sent out in every direction to scour the lands around Rivendell. Your aid in this would be of great service to our cause. Very well. 
Where should we start? Agandawa is our chief concern. Although the Nazgul are powerful foes, their mission here in the north is abundantly clear. We can only guess what Agandawa may be planning, or where he went after he escaped from you. I suspect he may be planning to move against us here. Sauron's hatred of the Elves is very great, and he does not forget the hand we played in his defeat during the War of the Last Alliance. If it is strength he wants, he may well find it among the Etten Wars. I know little of the Etten Wars. What can you tell me of this place? The Etten Wars are a spur of the Misty Mountains, lying almost directly north of Rivendell. It is a wild region of very rugged terrain, home to many trolls and giants. I myself was in the Etten Moors but days ago. I saw no sign of Agandau's presence, and neither did I encounter trolls. That fact alone is troubling. It could be that they are gathering in force somewhere among the Moors. We will travel to the Etten Moors. If the enemy is active there, we will know of it. From what I have heard of you, from Aragorn and Elrond's sons, I expected no less. Still, you have had a long road and hard fighting to get this far. Take what time you need to rest and recover before you set out. The Atten Moors are a dangerous place for the unprepared. The hospitality of my house is yours for as long as you wish. <laughs> Ah, Andriel. It is good of you to seek me out. Though I did not say so before, I am most impressed by your skills as a lawmaster, and by the courage you and your companions have shown. The Dúnedain Kingdom of Arnor fell long ago. There is nothing left in much of the north save ruins. Why would Sauron build a force here? Sauron seeks dominion over all of Middle-earth. His desire is to order all things as he sees fit. Even were these lands empty from here to the sea, still he would seek to control them. There is power in Rivendell that could stand against him when all others fall, for a time. And this is something Sauron cannot allow. Of all those now threatened by the enemy, the Shire folk are the least able to defend themselves. Perhaps I am needed there. I believe Elrond has made his wishes clear, Andriel. He knows you are needed urgently elsewhere. With the flight of the ring in this direction, the enemy is looking this way and has forgotten the Shire for now. For now. But eventually his eye will turn once again toward the Shire, as humble as it is. Hobbits as miserable slaves would please him far more than hobbits happy and free. And there is such a thing as malice and revenge. Sauron will leave the final devastation of the Shire to his servant Agandawa. And that is yet another reason why you must find him and put an end to his designs. In opposing Agandawa, you are defending the Shire. You may have heard that Belarom aided us at Fornost. Surely we could call upon the Eagles to aid in the matter of the Ring. I don't fault you for thinking along those lines. Why not beg a ride from an eagle, fly far out to the west, and drop the ring into the deepest part of the sea? Such ideas were debated at Elrond's council. But there are many things in the deep waters, and seas and lands may change. We cannot think of our time alone. We must destroy this thing forever. Frodo weighs little. Mount him on an eagle and send them straight away to Mount Doom. Indeed. So simple as that. You think so mighty a creature as one of the great eagles could simply waft into Mordor and escape the eye that never sleeps? No. Not all the eagles of the Misty Mountains could stand against Sauron and the full power of his ringwraiths. It would be folly. Nor, for that matter, do the great eagles take orders from us. Your pardon, Mithrandir. Of course the wise would have spoken of such things. I merely hoped there would be a better way than sending Frodo to the fire. You have a good heart, and I wish it could be so. We debated many such notions. I had even given thought to dragons. There was a time when dragon fire could destroy a ring of power. But even if the mightiest of the dragons of old, and Caligon the Black, were alive today, 
His fire would not be enough to consume the One Ring. Sauron's ring. No, there is no other way. Frodo must go to Mount Doom. And you have a foe of your own you must contend with. Agendauer. And there is no telling what allies and powers he is gathering. Agendauer struck me as being older than he appeared. Have you ever encountered him? Though I know nothing of Agendauer himself. I have seen his kind at other times in distant lands. He is likely a black Numenorian, and a master of dark sorceries. It was long ago, even before my birth, when those distant kin of the Dunedain fell into evil. If he comes of that bloodline, he is even more dangerous than I had imagined. Who can say what promises Sauron has made to him? Perhaps even a ring of his own? At the very least, Agendauer expects to rule all of the North. He would be a cruel tyrant. The elves he will seek to utterly destroy. Hobbits, men, dwarves, any that survive will be enslaved. And he will raise an iron kingdom in the North, in mockery of the ancient glory of Arnor. This is his dark dream. It must never come to pass. When we first arrived, you said you recently passed through the Eton Wars. Is there more you can tell me? It is a rough and empty land, home to many trolls. I passed through with great haste, for I needed to reach Rivendell as quickly as I could. And yet you saw no sign of trolls? I saw neither trolls nor fresh signs of them. And that disturbs me more than encountering one. I doubt they've all packed up and left. Mindless brute creatures they may be. Yet they can be used and driven to even greater wickedness by a strong enough hand. Agendauer could well be forming them into an army. You believe he is mustering the trolls for an attack? That is my fear. I would gladly be proven wrong. But my heart misgives me that somewhere in the Etten Wars, you will find them gathering and being prepared for war. We must know. Such a force could be sent against Rivendell, perhaps in hopes of capturing the ring. I will gather my friends and set out for the moors. We will see what we can learn. Andriel, I am glad you are here. I hoped I would have the opportunity to speak with you privately before you left for the Eton Moors. I wish to tell you how proud I am of what you accomplished at Fornost. You have brought great honor to our household. Indeed, all of Imladris is singing your praises. But I do not believe you have come merely to hear my thanks. Do you have questions for me? I discovered this scroll at Fornost. It is tainted with evil, yet I thought it best you should see it. A wise decision. This is writ in the black speech of Mordor, a language I will not utter here. It is intended to instruct the reader in the use of dark sorceries. We encountered orcs at Fornost who used spells against us. Then it seems this has already been put to use. That is grim news. The Dark Lord is a master of necromancy and other foul sorceries. He has taught these abominations to men in the past, but never, to my knowledge, to orcs. Dare I ask you to explain more about the dark art of necromancy? Necromancy is the darkest form of sorcery. It deals with raising the dead. 
Sauron has such powers at his command? He does indeed. It was for this reason he was known as the Necromancer when he still dwelt in the fortress of Dol Guldur in Mirkwood. At that time we did not know this was Sauron returned, but we knew there was a great evil there. Have you not experienced this power firsthand in your journey through the Borrow Downs? It was Sauron's chief servant, the Witch King, who summoned the Borrow Whites to infest those tombs. But why would the dead men of the Borrow Downs serve the enemy? Many of them were our allies in ages past. These shades are not truly the dead returned to life. Not even Sauron has that power. It is accomplished through the summoning of malignant spirits to inhabit the remains of the dead. It is a mockery of life, and the foulest form of desecration. What can you tell me of the Black Speech? The language devised by Sauron when he desired a single tongue to be spoken by all who serve him. He had small luck introducing it to the scattered tribes of orcs and trolls, but it is still used by his highest-ranking servants. Then it is good we captured this from the enemy before it could cause further harm. What will become of it? I will destroy this scroll, at the very least. But wait, here I discover more. Listen to what is written herein. Scribed by the hand of Agandaur, disciple of the great Lord Sauron, for the empowerment of his servant Wolfram and those others of his faithful who prove worthy. I will speak no more of these blasphemies, but it does say that this scroll is one of seven such works. Who is this Wolfram the scroll speaks of? I know not, but whoever he may be, he is certain to be deep in the sway of the Dark Lord, and very likely a powerful sorcerer in his own right. We must be watchful for any sign of his presence in the days ahead. Seven at one time, perhaps. But Agandar may well have created many more such scrolls since this writing. Perhaps. But creating something of this nature is not a matter of simple scribing. Considerable preparation and effort is involved. We have reason to hope there are no more than seven. So six more remain. Perhaps we might capture them as well. That would be a great service to our cause. Should you recover them all, bring them to me, and I will ensure they are destroyed. Would it not be better to destroy any I find immediately? You will find that works of this sort are not so easily destroyed. There are strong wards placed upon them that protect them from mundane harm. But I have the necessary skill to remove these wards. Should you gather the remaining scrolls, bring them to me, and I will see them destroyed. I will be certain to do so. In the meantime, please accept this in appreciation for bringing this matter to my attention. Perhaps it will be of service to you in your travels. There is something else. I discovered this tome hidden amid the ruins of Fornost. Ah, now this is writing of an altogether more wholesome sort. This was not made by any minion of Sauron, but rather by the men of Arthodyne, likely before the fall of Fornost. Tell me about this realm of Arthodyne. Arthodyne was the last fragment of the great northern kingdom of Arnor. The heirs of Isildur ruled as kings of Arthodyne until it too was destroyed by the enemy. Arthodyne fell, but the line of kings was not extinguished. It is true Isildur's line has remained unbroken. But without a kingdom to rule, they have not claimed the title of king and have been known simply as chieftains of the Dunedain. It is our friend Aragorn who currently bears that title, although he will be the last to do so. Either he will become a king, or Isildur's line will come to an end with him. Perhaps this tome is a record of those days long past. It appears to use the elvish characters as was common with those folk, but I can make little of it at a quick glance. Perhaps you can discover more. Indeed. It seems to be a personal journal. And here is a name inscribed, M-A-L. Why, this appears to be a work of Malbeth, the seer of Arthodyne. Malbeth? Was he not a visionary of some sort? Many of the Dunedain race are gifted with foresight, but none more than Malbeth. He predicted the final destruction of the kingdom of Arthodyne, which befell exactly as he had foretold. I will examine this work carefully, who knows what other visions are here recorded. 
It may be that we will find something of value to us in this time of trouble. You did well in bringing this to me. Take this in way of thanks. I am pleased to have been of service. Thank you and farewell. Shards of Narsil, sword of Elendil. Soon it shall be remade, and Aragorn will bear it to war. Greetings, Andriel. I am glad for the chance to speak with an old friend. Need keeps me away from Inladris, but my thoughts are often with those who dwell here. It does not seem so very long ago that you dwelt here with us, but you have done and seen much since that time. You have grown, Estelle. Indeed. I am no longer the shoeless boy you once taught to make flutes from river reeds. So you remember that day? Of course. I remember being amazed by your wisdom and skill, and thinking such knowledge must be why they named you a law master. There are great joys to be had from our friendship with the Dunedain, but there are sorrows as well. Yes. Much like a man with a beloved dog is grieved by the knowledge that he will outlive his companion. You should not make sport of me. It is not like that at all. But when I look at you, I also see your father, Erethorn, and your grandfather, Eridor, and all those who came before you whom I've known. I envy you in that, for I never knew my father. Truthfully, I often feel like the lesser son of great sires. This is not true. Elrond himself has said that he sees more of your revered ancestor, Elendil, in you than in any of those he has known over the ages that lie between you. There is a high doom upon you, Aragorn, son of Erethorn. I perceive that you will do great things. We will soon know if you perceive correctly, Andrea. For the One Ring has been found, and I must go to war. A war from which I shall return a king, or not at all. Greetings, Andrea. I am glad for the chance to... I would like to know more about those chosen to be part of your fellowship. Who is it that interests you? What of Mithrandir, of Gandalf? The two of you are great friends. Can you tell me something of him? To know all there is to know of Gandalf would require a lifetime study. There is much about him that remains a mystery, even to me. Yet he is a relentless foe of Sauron, and without his vigilance, the ring would already be in the hands of the enemy. His wisdom and leadership will be of great value to the Fellowship. You go now to claim your rightful place as the King of Gondor. Above all, I go to help Frodo fulfill his quest. For unless the ring is destroyed, Gondor will soon fall. King or no king? I would like to know... Who is it that interests you? What of this man of Gondor, this Boromir? Boromir is the son of Denethor, the steward of Gondor. I had never met him before Elrond's council, but long years ago, under another name, I served his grandfather, Ecthelion. The men of Gondor are valiant and strong, and by all accounts, Boromir is foremost among them in courage and skill at arms. I suspect we will have need of his sword before our quest is through. One elf at least goes with you on your quest. Tell me about Legolas. It is fitting that we have a representative of the Eldar along with us. Your people have been foes of Sauron since before my ancestors returned to the shores of Middle-earth. The Elves of Mirkwood are constantly called upon to protect their realm from the many enemies that infest that wood. They are skilled warriors and unmatched archers. What can you tell me of the Dwarf, Gimli? I have spent little time among Dwarves, but Gimli is one of Durin's folk and the Dwarves of that line are trusted by Elrond, in spite of the differences that sometimes divide Elves and Dwarves. If Gimli is like most of his kin, he will prove loyal and stout-hearted, enduring in hardship and fierce in battle. What of these other hobbits? Is it wise to send so many of the little folk on this quest? We are asking much of Frodo. Until recently, he had never set foot outside the confines of the Shire. It will be a comfort for him to have the familiar companionship of his friends and kin in the face of so much that will be new and frightening. I have traveled with these hobbits, and they proved far more courageous and hardy than many would suspect. Good luck to you.
Andriel, I thought I might see you ere long. Imladris is filled with tales of your exploits. I believe Lynn Deer has even begun a song about them. But while battles can build a heroic reputation, they also break down equipment. You have need of my services. What task is before you now, Angmir? My fellow smiths and I are preparing for a great work. Soon we will be called upon to reforge the legendary sword Narsil. In the meantime, I have been sharpening my skills by practicing the art of imbuing gemstones. By imbuing, you mean the process of binding powers and virtues to an object? Yes. Clearly you have a good understanding of this art. As you know, gemstones are very strong vessels for this process. Sadly, appropriate gemstones have become difficult to find. The growing trouble throughout the land keeps travelers away, and our own people are staying closer to home. Perhaps I can help you with that. I will be traveling soon. I would be pleased to have your help. I will provide you with a list of the types of gemstones that are of the greatest value to me. If you collect the stones, I am certain I could create something that you would find useful. But to be of use, the gemstones must be of the highest quality. Fortunately, we have as a guest a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. Glowin is his name, and he is skilled in the appraisal of gems of all sorts. But once you have gathered the stones, allow him to examine them. He'll know if they are suitable. I have discovered some interesting relics of the Dunedain, Angmir. Perhaps you can help me with them. Ah, these are work of Westernese, the lost land of Numenor. The men who forged these items were skilled indeed. You have the makings of a unique weapon here. Although these components were never part of a single work, I believe you have assembled everything I would need to make it so. The finished weapon would undoubtedly carry some elven qualities. What do you mean by that? Only that with a work such as this, the finished product is liable to reflect the nature of the smith who assembles it. If, for example, a dwarven smith were to complete this weapon, it might possess quite different qualities from the weapon I would create. It seems fitting that an elven smith should do this task for me. Very good. I will get started at once. There, it is finished. May this serve you well, my friend. A worthy work indeed. You have my thanks, Angmir. The sun shines and all is fair and peaceful here in Elmadris. A far cry from the blood and dust of Fornast, is it not? The valor you showed there brings honor to all our folk. I'm only sorry you will have so little time here at home before setting out once more. How fares your sister, the Lady Arwen? She is well, although weighed down with care. It is hard for her to be so soon parted from Aragorn, her beloved. But such is their fate. How was it you happened to be at Bornost? You know how bitter is our hatred for the orcs since our mother's ordeal. We often ride far afield hunting them. We came upon signs of a large band of goblins making their way from the orc hold of Mount Gram and followed their trail to Fornost, where we lost no time in attacking them. Your mother is so rarely spoken of here. Will you tell me more of her? As you know, she has crossed the sea and departed Middle-earth. It is a bitter tale to tell. Many years passed, on a journey across the Misty Mountains, our mother was captured by orcs. We searched the mountains without rest until we found her at last. Our father was able to heal her injuries, but the memory of her torment was too terrible for her to bear. At last she chose to depart for the Undying Lands. Perhaps now you understand why our hatred for the orcs is so great. A sorrowful tale. I am sorry to have reminded you. No, my friend. We have known you too long to keep anything hidden from you. This is the evil that we have pledged our lives to destroy, just as you have. Farewell, friends. May good fortune accompany you. It is long since so many dwarves have graced the halls of Imladris. Who might you be? 
Gimli, son of Glowen, at your service. I've heard your name spoken with great praise. That was fine work you did at Fornost. Not bad at all for one of Thranduil's folk, who are more accustomed to stealth in the forest than open battle. But after all, you had the help of my kinsman, Farin. I heard he played a valiant part. <laughs> and so he did. But your wits fail you, Gimli, son of Glowen, if you cannot tell a wood elf from a member of Elrond's house. Ah, well, no offense meant, but there are Mirkwood elves about in the halls, and they are the kind most familiar to me, being our neighbors and allies. Any elf of Elrond's house is a friend of mine and my kin. I am honored to be a guest here amongst the wise. Farron spoke no word of more kin following him. What brings you such a distance to Imladris? Aye, it's a long march from the halls of Erebor, but grim news goes on swift feet. It was for Bilbo's sake we came, with a warning that the servants of Sauron wished to find him and his ring. Thrice a black rider came to the front gate of Erebor, demanding news of Bilbo, and threatens to return once more. Ere that should happen, King Dane sent my father, Glowen, to seek the advice of Elrond. You've heard the results of the council? I see you have. I have sworn to protect Frodo upon his quest, an oath I will fulfill though all the orcs of Middle-earth stand in my way. When you speak of a Black Rider, my mind is filled with the horror of the Nazgul. Was it such a fell messenger that came to your door? Not one of the Nazgul, I think, but it was a fell servant all the same, who spoke in a voice like the hissing of snakes. What sort of man can serve the enemy willingly, even gladly, is beyond my understanding. More cruel than any orc, he struck me, full of venom and lies. You could well be describing Agandar, for he is such a servant. Could it be so? Perhaps. It is enough that we will not be deceived by promises from Mordor ever again. The only way the Dark Lord gets his ring back this time is when it's tossed into the fires of Mount Doom. Elrond has tasked us with a mission to scout the Etenmores, but what is it that worries you about the North? I like not what I've heard of this Agandar you drove from Fornost. He could yet cause grief untold. There are rumors of gatherings of orcs, goblins, and other deadly foes growing in strength. When the Dark Lord strikes, there will be more than one land that feels his wrath. I fear for the Shire and Rivendell. It would ease my heart to know that you'll look to the defense of the North for as long as you're needed. With help from Farron, of course. Whatever Aradan and I, and the most esteemed Farron can do, we shall do. You have my promise. Nothing calls to my heart like this, my home. Unless, perhaps, the sea. Hello. You are Andriel, aren't you? I was hoping I would get a chance to speak with you. And you are Frodo Baggins. Aragorn and Gandalf have told me about you. And your burden. Likewise, they have told me all about you. I wanted to thank you and your friends for all you did to keep us safe on our journey to Rivendell. The greater part of your thanks belongs with the Dúnedain who fell defending the Shire. You are right, of course. For my part, I will never forget what they have done for us. Even though none of those they protected were even aware of their watch. I should like to think the people of the Shire will be safe now. There have been times in the past when I felt that an earthquake or an invasion of dragons might be good for them. But I don't feel like that anymore. Knowing the Shire lies behind, safe and comfortable, will make my journey more bearable. Will you tell me about your journey here? Clearly it was not an easy one. We had trouble almost from the start. The Black Riders were always just behind us, and we nearly met disaster in the Burrow Downs, at Bree, and again at Weathertop. You passed through the Burrow Downs? I know what you faced there. You are fortunate indeed to have escaped. That is no place to wander. You seem to know a great deal about the Burrow Downs already. I prefer not to speak about what we found there. It is too horrible to dwell on, even here in the safety of Rivendell. What befell you in Bree? We must have just missed crossing paths there. There were spies in Bree, and our room was attacked in the night. If Strider hadn't convinced us to sleep elsewhere, our journey would have ended then and there. I am familiar with the ruin known as Weathertop. What happened there? We were attacked by five of the Black Riders. I... I was foolish, and I put on the ring. 
One of them wounded me before Aragorn managed to drive them away. The knife that was used against me left a shard in the wound. From what Gandalf has told me, the fragment was working its way inward. If, if it had reached my heart, I would have become a wraith under the power of the Black Riders. Fortunately, we were able to reach Rivendell in time for Elrond's healing arts to save me. It is a little thing, this ring, but filled with mischief. Will you show it to me? No, I... I mean, I'm sorry, but Gandalf and Elrond have warned me against revealing the ring to anyone. Even proven friends. I hope you understand. Yes, I believe I do begin to understand. It was wrong of me to ask. I beg your pardon. There is nothing to forgive. But the ring, it has a strange effect on everyone around it. It is better for it to remain hidden. It is indeed a heavy burden you bear, Frodo. May you find strength and wisdom on the long road ahead. Farewell. Well, my friend, it's an honor to make the acquaintance of one of Farin's valiant companions. I'm Glon, son of Groen, from the Lonely Mountain. And one of Bilbo's companions in the quest to slay the dragon, Smaug. I remember seeing you when Thor and Oakenshield's company stayed with us here in Rivendell. I am Andriel, a lawmaster of Elrond's house. I heard about that business at Sarn Ford, and they say the three of you brought down an orc chieftain at Fornost. <laughs> I expect I'll be hearing of even greater deeds before long. It does my heart good to see a dwarf, an elf, and a man working together again. <laughs> Reminds me of the old days it does, when the three kindred fought alongside one another in the Battle of the Five Armies. Then you approve of my alliance with Farn? I will speak plainly. I may be less than fond of King Thranduil's wood elves for keeping me in their dungeons, but I've no grudge with any of Elrond's folk. I have heard when a dwarf bears a grudge, it is set in stone. But I believe this grudge against the wood elves should have been put aside long ago. You're right, of course. I can be a stiff-necked old dwarf. But it's time to set aside grievances that were long ago repaid. When dwarves, men, and elves fought together at Erebor, we overcame legions of foes. But we face a far more terrible enemy in the Dark Lord. Standing together against Agandar may be more than just a good idea. It may be our only hope to save the North. Sauron's attention will be focused largely on the South. If we thwart his plans here, he will be distracted. That could prove a benefit to the Ringbearer. That's my thoughts upon the matter, too. Be the stinging fly in the ointment, as it were. <laughs> Only this fly's sting will be deadly. And it's time to be about your business. Goodbye, and good luck to you. Andriel, welcome home. It is good to have you back. I have already heard tales of your exploits. All of Imladris is proud of what you have done. Oh, but I forget my duties as steward. You have been through many bitter battles. Are you in need of new arms or equipment? It is good to be home once again, Ilari. How fares Imladris in my absence? Less serene than usual, I fear. The servants of the enemy came almost to our very doors in pursuit of the hobbit Frodo Baggins. But he was saved by the valor of Aragorn and the arts of the Lord Elrond. But you know more of this than I. And Frodo? He came through all this peril and safety? He was gravely injured by one of the evil weapons of the enemy. It was thought that he would not survive. But Elrond's skill as a healer is unsurpassed. He saved his life, much to the relief of Bilbo. So Frodo is dear to Bilbo? Oh yes, he is his nephew and heir. Bilbo hardly left his side during the long days that Elrond tended him. Were the Nazgul that pursued Frodo destroyed? I do not know, but my heart tells me they were not. Elrond will be sending out many scouts to learn what they may of the fate of the Nazgul and the movements of the enemy. I have been told to prepare supplies for them.
Those who venture into the... Hello there, Andriel. It's good to see you back safe and sound. I've heard all about what you and your friends did to help my Frodo and the Dunedan reach Rivendell safely. Oh, you'll have to tell me all about it one of these days so I can write it all down properly. Can you tell me how Frodo came to be in possession of the Ring of Power? Well, yes, that was through me, I'm afraid. I found the ring by happenstance while lost beneath the roots of the Misty Mountains. I won it, that is to say, I took it from the creature Gollum. Of course, I did not know the full story of the ring until only a few days ago. I thought it was merely a magical bauble with the power to make the wearer invisible. I only used it to avoid unwelcome visitors. Imagine that old ring of mine causing such a fuss. I would gladly take charge of it again if that would help. Oh, yes. Yeah. Gladly. Yes. You know... I think it would be best if we discussed something else. So, you have been keeping up with your writing. What is it you are working on now? Oh, a little of this and a little of that. History, my past adventures, family trees. I've even begun a book of translations from the Elvish. Although lately I've been working on poetry mostly. Say, maybe you could help me with that. I'm writing a poem for Aragorn, and I'm a bit stuck on a line or two. Is that so? Well then, let me hear what you have. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, the verse that's giving me trouble runs like this. Ahem. <clears throat> the light from the west is rekindled. Forth from him ladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. Hmm. The light from the west is rekindled. Forth from him, Ladris, it springs. Renewed is the hope that is dwindled. The scion of Westernese kings. Why, yes, yes, that's just the thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my friend, you should consider exchanging those weapons of yours for the poet's pen. I hope the day will come again when we concern ourselves solely with music and poetry. But I fear that day is still far off. Oh, I'm afraid you're right, but since these old hands are not much use with the sword, I'll just keep on with the pen. Though I'll need some help. Perhaps you could show this to the Lady Arwen. She has her people's gift with words, and this touches her deeply, after all. Arwen? Do you really think this is something we should trouble the daughter of Elrond with? Oh, you are too formal, my friend. Why, I'll have you know that the Lady Arwen has frequently helped me with my poetry, and she is one of the best sources of elven history. Her rendition of the tale of Beren and Luthien is especially moving. I will take it to her. Ah, thanks very much. Uh, be sure to give her my compliments, won't you? Happily. Farewell for now, Bilbo. something I have not seen in many a long year, and Elf in Imladris I do not know. Welcome, friend. I am Andrea. Greetings, lady. I am Legolas, son of King Thranduil of the Woodland Realm in Mo- Your pardon. I did not know I addressed a prince. <laughs> yes, a prince. But please, there's no need to stand on formalities. We of Mirkwood seldom do. What brought you on such a long and perilous journey? Unpleasant business. My father sent me to report the escape of Gollum, a creature Aragorn had entrusted to our care. What can you tell me about this Gollum? A pathetic creature who long held the Ring of Power. The evil of the Ring has left him twisted and tormented. His only thought is to recover what was taken from him. How did Gollum escape your guard? Not from a lack of watchfulness, but perhaps from too much kindness. We occasionally allowed Gollum to go about the wood under close guard. But on one of these ventures, the guards were attacked by orcs from Dol Guldur. In the confusion, Gollum escaped. We followed his tracks southward for many leagues, until it drew near to Dol Guldur. There, 
it became too dangerous to pursue him any further. What is this place, Dol Guldur? A stronghold of the enemy in the south of Mirkwood. It was once the dwelling of the Dark Lord, until he was driven out in the year of the Dragon's Fall. But it has once again become a place of great evil. All the darkness that besets Mirkwood has its source in Dol Guldur. Will you be departing for your home soon? No. I have been chosen to represent Elvenkind among the Company of the Ring. I will be accompanying the halfling, Frodo Baggins, on his journey south. I wonder why it is that with so many elves in his own household to consider, Elrond chose to make you a member of the Fellowship. I asked for the privilege, and Elrond did not refuse me. I feel he may have been relieved not to lose any of his household to this quest. He will have need of all his strength, should the enemy move against him Lardris. I am curious why you would volunteer for this. Partially to make amends for the loss of Gollum, but more so because this will be the final chapter in our long struggle against the darkness. And I wish to have a hand in our final victory, or at least to stand in the forefront of our last act of defiance. May Elbereth guide you in the days ahead, Legolas. And you as well, Andriel. Andrael, my Govanin, it is good to see you safely returned. I am told you passed through many dangers to bring us warning of a new threat facing these lands. Estelle speaks highly of you, and my brothers praise the courage you showed at Bornost. I thank you for the part you played in their safe return as well. Rest now a while in the peace of Imladris. It is long since we sat and spoke of Urblur and other gentle hearts. It is a matter of the gentle arts that I bring to you. I have been speaking with Bilbo. <laughs> ah, say no more. I thought our people had a passion for poetry. But this hobbit may yet put us to shame. He has put me to shame, to be sure. Not all elves have the gift of verse. He asks for your opinion and advice. For he says the subject is a matter very close to your heart. Then I would guess it is another poem in honor of Estelle. Leave it with me, Andreo. I will give it some thought and answer him myself. Bilbo will be pleased, I am sure. I would that I had more time for such arts, but Elrond is in need of my skills, and I fear I must leave for the Ettenwalls as soon as may be. Then I will not keep you, but perhaps we may be of service to one another. Your journey may solve a problem that has perplexed me. I am helping my father create a quantity of Mirabor and we may fall short of certain rare ingredients which can be found in the Etten Moors. In all my years at Imladris, only once have I tasted the fragrant cordial Mirabor. I remember how it renewed my heart and gave me fresh strength. Yes, it is difficult to create and therefore precious. If I gave you a list of the ingredients, perhaps you could bring them back from the Etten Moors. I will set aside a flask for your own use when we have brewed it. You are generous, lady. I will seek them out for you, and return with them once my mission is completed. This is rough country, no mistake. So far, we've seen no sign of trouble. But the moors... Foul creatures!
will prove useful.
Greetings, my friends. I could scarce believe what I saw from above. But elf, dwarf, and man battling the enemy together, such things are not often seen. I knew it had to be you. Is that you, Bellaram? I never thought we'd meet again so soon. Nor did I. It does seem a strange coincidence, but a happy one, nonetheless. You bested that troll with ease. Well done. It is not the first time I have had to contend with troll kind. Yet we have accounted for but a few leaves in a forest of foes. Orcs and trolls are gathering in great numbers to follow in the wake of Bargrissar, a treacherous stone giant. The foul folk respect his strength, and this unites them to our peril. A stone giant? I have heard tales of such creatures, but I scarce believed they were true. Oh, they're real, all right. My kinsmen encountered them once while crossing the Misty Mountains. They never mentioned the creatures were hostile, though. They seldom are. Eagles and the stone giants have shared the mountain heights without conflict for many generations. But this giant, Bagrasar, is different. Without provocation, he ambushed some of our people, taking them unaware and striking them down with hurled boulders. Many of our Ares he also destroyed along with the defenseless fledglings who nested there. Gwaihir summoned his strength to punish the giant, but he fled before us. We believe he has come here to the Etten Moors, where he is gathering an army of orcs and trolls. Bagrasar is a threat to all. The sooner he is destroyed, the safer we shall be. Perhaps there are other giants in league with Bagrasar. I do not believe so, for we have learned Bagrasar is an outcast among his own kind, they disowned him for past crimes, and we'll offer him no protection from our vengeance. Gandalf the Grey traveled here unhindered only a few short weeks ago. Yet now we find the moors are filled with foes. Is it unusual to find so many enemies here? These moors are always dangerous. A breeding ground for trolls and orcs. But even here, it is unusual to see so many enemies openly assembling. The presence of Bagrasar makes them bold. They believe he will lead them to the bloodshed and plunder they crave. And it may well be, unless the giant is destroyed. We will not leave our allies to face this enemy alone. Let us join with you in the hunt for Bagrasar. Your aid would be most welcome. Together we may be able to best him. Every hour he lives, his following grows greater. Let us press on! Oh, 
will prove useful. This will prove useful. This will prove useful. Ugh. This will prove useful.
This will prove useful. This will prove useful. This will prove useful.
archers above us. Hidden Dunadine cache.
We must find a way past this gate. They have trapped us! Die, you! Stop moving in the tree. We must work together to overcome these odds. Oh, the stench here is difficult to endure. Surely this is a troll's lair. Those who venture... Those who venture in... seemingly untouched in battle. Such is the valor of the Dunedain. I am pleased to be back. I have brought you the items you requested from the Etanmors. Thank you. You have brought these in good time, for we have made barely enough Miravor for present need, and now there is none to spare. With these supplies, I can replace what has been given away. And as I promised, I have kept aside a flask for you. Miravor is potent. 
Thus, I would advise you to keep this against a time when you're sorely hurt and your strength of will falters. Drink of it then, and you will be restored. Thank you, Lady Arwen. When such a time comes, I will remember your generosity. Is there something amiss, Lady Arwen? It would seem that something troubles you. Is there a way I may help? You have done much already, but I will lay my problem before you. For many years, I have worked secretly upon a banner for Estelle, for Aragorn. It is my hope he will bear it triumphantly into Gondor, when the time is right for him to reclaim his heritage. This must be a banner like no other, and must endure for the ages. To that end, I am using the most precious of metals, Mithril. Our most skilled smith, Angmir, has drawn Mithril into thread for me. The embroidery is nearly done, but as careful as I have been, I fear what I have may not be enough to complete the design. But Mithril can only be found in the mines of Moria, a distant and perilous place by all accounts. Unless you know of anywhere else we might find it. It is true. There is nowhere in Middle-earth where Mithril might still be mined other than Moria. Yet in ages past, quantities of this precious metal made their way by trade and gift to many other places in the world. Yes. If the stories are true, the guardsmen of the Citadel and distant Minas Tirith wear helms of Mithril. Still, it seems there is little hope that more Mithril can be found in so short a time. What exists in the world is likely considered too precious to part with. It seems my fate to travel far and frequently, and what cannot be obtained in peace may sometimes be seized as spoils of war. For the sake of my captain and future king, any Mithril I find shall be yours. That is a noble offer. I would not ask you to go into such danger for this alone, for it may yet prove that I already have all that I require. Still, it would ease my mind, and I would see that you were well rewarded for your courage and generosity. May Elbereth watch over you and keep you safe. Smell alone tells me we have found a troll's land.
At last, I see sunlight ahead. Need more time.
like another ranger has hidden some supplies here. Those who vent... Those who...
It is finished. My people are avenged. And behold, here come your kin. My lord. It would appear that you have done our work for us, Belaram. Not I, Lord Gwaihir. Your thanks belong to these three. Andriel, Farin, and Aradan. It is they who rid us of Bagrasar. The same three that saved you at Fornost. Indeed. A remarkable chance that we should meet again. If chance it was, your fate seems strangely intertwined. But be that as it may, we are doubly grateful to you. First for saving the life of Belaram, and now for slaying the giant. Are there more stone giants to deal with? There are other giants, certainly, but none that we would consider an enemy. Bargrizar was ever inclined to mischief, and was shunned by his own folk. Yet I never thought him capable of murder. He must have been persuaded to undertake these actions. We have discovered signs that Agandar has been here in the Ettenmoors, that same servant of the Dark Lord that we encountered at Fornost. Then we need look no further for the source of Bargrazar's corruption. But how is it you chose to search these remote moors for Agandar? Elrond Half-Elfin sent us. He had a feeling the enemy might be gathering here. I will not question the wisdom of Master Elrond. He sees much that is hidden from others. Yet I fear you have come too late to find Agandauer. We have searched the Ettenmoors thoroughly in our hunt for Bargrazar, yet we have seen no sign of this servant of the Dark Lord. If he was here, we can be reasonably certain he is here no longer. My people will work to disperse the enemy forces that remain in the Moors. We will be on guard against the return of Agandauer. Then we should return to Elrond at Rivendell. He will be anxious for news, and we have already been long away. I will arrange for a messenger. My lord, I owe my life to these three. And I too believe Agandar to be a grave threat to the free peoples of the north. Eagles no less so than any other. If you would grant me leave, I wish to accompany them and aid them in their quest. You ask a great deal, Belaram. I may have need for all my followers soon. Yet I perceive a great destiny awaits these three, and it seems you are now part of it. Very well. I will grant you permission to join with them for as long as you see fit. Unless Belaram plans to carry his friends like sheep in his talons, he will need help. If it pleases you, my lord, I will gladly accompany them as well. I too have a stake in this quest. Let me be the third. So be it. Three who cleave the air to match three who walk the earth. May fortune favor you all. Arminel, Baranthor, you shall be at Belaram's command. Obey his word until such time as you return to us. Now I must depart. Many forces are at work across Middle-earth, and many events take shape. I must consider what part the Eagles will play in them. Farewell wherever you fare, Lord Gwaihir. You return at last. We grew concerned for you. I fear you have missed your chance to say farewell to the members of the Fellowship, for they have departed. Clearly you found danger in the Ettenmoors, yet you have returned safely, and in the company of three of the Great Eagles, no less. There is a story behind this, and I am eager to hear it. The Ring is on its way south. When did the Fellowship set out? They have only just departed. Did you discover something in the Etten Moors that makes you fear for their safety? Yes, but it is a danger we all share. We found trolls and orcs preparing for war, just as we feared, and they were led by a renegade stone giant. He had made attacks against Gwaihir's people, but with the Eagle Balaram's help, we managed to put an end to him. That was well done, but this is troubling. Why would a stone giant act in this manner? 
They have never been hostile to free folk before. We found these tokens on some of the slain. Some of them bear the Black Raven emblem of Agandam. Then we can be certain he is behind the giant's descent into evil. But there are also other tokens here I recognize. These are the marks of the orcs of Mount Gundabad, far to the north. What can you tell us of Mount Gundabad? It is a great peak that stands far to the north, at the meeting point of the Misty Mountains and the Grey Mountains. Once, Gundabad was a delving of the dwarves, but it was abandoned long ago. It has since become a stronghold of the orcs. It would be hard-pressed to find a more dangerous location in all the north. Could Agandar be a threat to the Ringbearer and his mission? Perhaps. But the Company of the Ring is bound southward, away from the regions where we believe Agandaur to be. We can hope that he has no thought for the Ring. Indeed, I doubt he even knows of it. Why would Agandaur not know of the Ring? He is an important servant of the Dark Lord. Do not forget, for all his power, Agandaur is a mortal man. As bound as he is to the Dark Lord, he is not a slave to his will, as are the Ringwraiths. Were Agandaur to discover the ring, he would certainly be tempted to claim it as his own. I doubt Sauron would take such a risk. We have seen the forces Agandaur commands, and they are formidable. Rivendell may well be their target. I fear you are correct. We have made plans for our defense, but truthfully, our best hope lies in eliminating the threat of Agandaur. If the orcs of Mount Gundabad are serving Agandaur, perhaps we can find him there. It may well be. From Mount Gundabad, the orcs have many tunnels and secret pathways connecting the hidden mines and orc holds of the Misty Mountains. The orcs can move along those routes in great numbers without being seen. If Agandaur is raising an army to fight for his master in the north, it is certain he will have traveled to Gundabad. The evidence you have uncovered confirms this to be so. Yet we have no way of knowing if he is there still. Maybe not. But it's not like we have many more choices, other than to sit waiting for Agandaur to strike first. To walk into such an orc-infested pit as Mount Gundabad would seem like folly. But you have proven your skill and daring many times over. And, too, you have the eagles to aid you. It may be that you will find a way to take the enemy by surprise. It is certain that, were you to destroy Agandaur, you would cut the heart from Sauron's plan to make war in the north. But what of Frodo and his quest? Is there nothing more we can do to assist him? That die is cast. We must abide the consequences, for good or ill. There is nothing more we here can do but to look to our own defense. How will you prepare? We will continue to plan for the defense of Imladris. The enemy will not find us unprepared. I will send warnings to such allies as we have. There is strength to be found in Imladris still, but in truth, you three may be our best hope. Then we shall not fail. We travel to Mount Gundabad. Your courage is commendable, but be certain you are well prepared. Mount Gundabad will not be forgiving of the unwary. Farewell, and may the stars shine upon your path. Is there something I can help you with, Andrea? I will take no... Ah, it's good to see you again. Have you had any luck procuring the gemstones we spoke of? Yes, here are the stones you requested. Excellent, but we must be assured of their quality. Take them to the dwarf, Glowin. His skill at appraising gemstones is unequaled. Very well. I shall return soon. It is a fine day for flying, don't you think? Are you kin to Belaram? No, but he has always guided me. Belaram taught me tricks of the air and secrets of the wind. We often hunt together. He's shown me the fine art of snatching a wild sheep from the side of a mountain. 
and how to dive upon a wolf and pluck hairs from its tail. Wherever Belleron leads, I will follow. Great eagles are not built to carry burdens, Berenthal. I would not have you continue to carry us against your will. I am more than willing. I had long begged the Windlord for a chance to prove myself. I don't fear orc, goblin, or troll. Let's return to the air and put fear into the hearts of our enemies. It is a grand adventure. Are you one of the eagles who came to Bilbo's aid in his quest? I haven't met Bilbo, though I've heard much about him. My father was one of those who carried a dwarf and later fought in the Battle of Five Armies. I was considered too young and inexperienced to take part in the battle. I have much to do if I'm to match my father's fame and valor. What do you know of Mount Gundabad? I've never been there, but I know it's a high peak that lies far to the north, on the edge of the frozen wastes, and that it has long been infested with orcs. We do not nest there. When the north wind blows across the wastes, it racks the mountain with blizzards driven by fierce gales. But I will not be daunted by the north wind. I am grateful to you, Lore Master. Even our high areas were threatened by the giant Bagrasar. You have my thanks. What can you tell me of your leader, Gwaihir? Gwaihir is the Lord of the Eagles. He can outfly the North Wind, and his word is law. Long ages of the world have passed since ancient Thorondor, first and greatest of Eagle Lords, soared over Middle-earth. But Gwaihir is the mightiest descendant of that line. He is wise, and sees much that others miss. An eagle rarely offers to carry another on his back. Why do you offer us this rare privilege? It was enough for me that Belaram wished to join you. But there is also this. One of the eagles the stone giant slew was my own father. You avenged him, and for that act alone I would bear any of you to the farthest ends of Middle-earth. And though Bagrasar is gone, I still burn with the need for vengeance against the master that sent him against us, Agandar. Your enemy is my enemy. I will not rest until he is brought down. Were you one of the eagles that took part in the Battle of Five Armies? So I was. When the Allied armies found themselves set upon by goblins who had stealthily scaled the mountain slopes, I was among those who set upon the enemy and cast them from the cliffs to perish. Are you ready for a long flight to Mount Gundabald? We are strong and rested. Belaram awaits you whenever you wish to depart. He is our leader in this venture. Good to see you again, Andriel. What can I do for you? I have collected these gemstones for the smith Angmir, but if he is to make use of them, they must be of the highest quality. He wishes for your appraisal. My pleasure. I always enjoy handling fine gems. Mm. Oh, yes. These are excellent stones. See here, the depth of color. The way they seem to shine with an inner light. In fact, I've a fancy to buy them from you. I never tire of collecting such stones, and I've plenty of coin in my purse. How is the weight of your own purse these days? I would not wish to insult Angmir by failing to return with the gems, but thank you all the same. Ah, well. Fair enough. But the offer stands if you change your mind. Those who venture... Those who venture...
Welcome. He has. Here they are. Ah, excellent. I will put these to good use. And since you have provided me with the materials I need to fashion more elf stones, I would be pleased if you would accept some of my already finished work. Take whichever suits you best. Awaits us. We ask a great deal of you to carry us into such danger. Perhaps we ask too much. I believe this is the time when all who care for the fate of Middle Earth must act. From on high, I see many lands and many people beneath my wings. In my own way, I am a steward of the North. In this hour, I will join with those who are bold enough and strong enough to stand against the likes of Agandar. But if we fail, there may be nothing left to watch over. The friendship of the Great Eagles is a rare honor, and your friendship is a treasure beyond price, Balaram. It is I who am honored. I am pleased to find such friends in these dark times. You may depend on me to the end, whatever that may be. Call upon me without hesitation. We stand ready to bear you to Gundabad. I thought it a rare thing that you offered your aid to us, and hardly expected two more Eagles to do the same. What can you tell me of them? Armanel is a seasoned warrior. He knows full well what he faces, and accepts it gladly. Baron Thor is young and eager to prove himself, but he has deep courage, and few can match his swiftness on the wing. But you need not take my word. Ask them yourself. They will gladly speak with you if you so desire. I will confess, I was surprised that Gwaihir gave you leave to come with us. He rarely intervenes in the affairs of those who walk upon the ground. It is true, Gwaihir thinks first of the safety of his own kind, and he is more likely to take a dangerous task upon himself than to send another. He sees us as observers, watching from high above, but holding aloof from the affairs of the Earth. He feels we should bear information, not burdens. Even now, the Windlord is considering what part the Great Eagle should play in the events that lie before us, though there may be little time left to ponder such things. We would not wish to cause strife between the Windlord and you, yet it seems you disagree with his view. I have served Gwaihir loyally for a long time, and he, in turn, has the wisdom to trust my judgment. He knows that I have chosen the wind I must fly upon, and my choice is this. I can no longer stand apart. I must act. Even an eagle must rest upon an area that has its roots in the earth. We cannot entirely escape the ground, and the fate of elves, men, dwarves, and even hobbits will ultimately be our fate. What should we expect when we reach Mount Gundabad? I can tell you little. The stronghold of Gundabad is carved into a great mountain peak covered in snow and ice. We rarely fly that far north because of the treacherous winds and blizzards that howl from the frozen wastes beyond. It is an ancient abode of enemies, and we must approach it with the greatest caution. Perhaps Gundabad is an impossible task. Three alone cannot hope to stand against all the orcs of Gundabad. Only stealth will serve you. We must search out a secret way that will not pit you directly against your foes, or you will stir up a hornet's nest such as you cannot imagine. I have seen you three triumph against desperate odds. If you cannot find a way, then no one can. My companions and I will be there to help as best we may, but once you enter the confines of Gundabad, there will be little that we can do. I will bear that in mind. Farewell. our destination soon, or well, this weather may prove more deadly than the orcs. Take heart. We are nearly there, and this snowfall will hide us from the eyes of the enemy below. Belram, look! Above the mountain! Set us down. We can attempt to find a way into the mountain under the cover of this storm. 
There is little chance of that, with those creatures keeping watch from above. Once we land you, my comrades and I will draw off the beasts. Let's hope those flying beasts are too occupied with the eagles to notice us. We can hope their eyes are less keen than those of our eagle friends. We may appear to be just a few more orcs among the hordes of Gundabad. ahead of us. They seem to be searching for something. Well, it can't be us. We've only just arrived, and they're heading the other way. But what then are they looking for?
I can make use of. Our way is barred.
to all. It appears they've been feeding upon the orcs. We are getting near to the mountain itself. If there's an entrance here, it'll be nearby. a sharp skirmish here. The tracks are hard to read. It appears the fighting carried on into the mountain. Someone was here before us. There was a fight here very recently. The bodies. They're dwarves. This one lives still. Well then, come on, you scum. Finish it. You... You're not orcs. Andriel, help him. Use your arts. No, no. Save it. The arrows. Poison. No hope. But you... You can help. Help my friends. Why are you here? What were you attempting? We seek 
A weapon. We must find it. Use it. Stop the orcs. What is this weapon? Where can we find it? Dwarf weapon. In the stone. Nordry has a key. Find them. Help them. Please. Save Nordenbach. We are looking for a man called Agendauer. Is he here? Agendauer. He... he... Nordenbach. He... He can't tell us anything more. He's gone. But there may be more like him within this fortress. Yes. They're searching for some sort of weapon. Come, we must try to find them. It pains me to leave fallen dwarves to these accursed orcs.
What of this? These chains and gears. This is the heart of the enemy's war machine. They forge weapons and armor to equip the world's gallery. Can't you smell it? The same blast that we're using against the That noise! What have we done? Store of it here. Then let us destroy the gears. Perhaps we will slow them more. That's done it! We must move down!
Follow dwarves. We must be close. You won't find out standing here. This is it! Quick climb! Up you go!
to a place like this, but I'm mighty glad to see you all the same. We might say exactly the same. What are you doing here? We've come to activate an ancient weapon. With luck, it'll kill a lot of orcs. What sort of weapon? You'll see. Once activated, it'll take some time to do its work. Aye, and it's sure to bring a lot more orcs down on us, too. No time for dilly-dallying. Go ahead and use it. We'll hold off the orcs.
mountain is coming down! Aye, a good deal of it anyway, just as we hoped. You knew this was going to happen? It's what we came here for. We had to strike this blow if our people are to survive. I am... I am heartily sorry for getting all of you killed as well. I don't think we need to worry about death just yet. Look! Daring's beard! This is a day I'll not soon forget. I've seen a few things in my time, but I've not flown on an eagle's back till today. Well, now that it's a bit easier to talk, let me thank you properly for saving our lives and bid you welcome to Nordenbad, our home. Nordry's father, the Lord Gorin, will want to speak with you. Nordry's gone ahead to report on the Gundabad raid and to tell him about everything you did for us. We are pleased to be made welcome here, but in the rush of battle and our hurried escape, I fear we missed your name. Oh, confound me for an old fool. Bruni, son of Bane, at your service and your families. A captain of the Nordenbad Guard and a servant of Lord Gorin. What can you tell us of the device you used to collapse the ceiling at Gundabad? In all my long years of study, I have heard of nothing like it. It was an ancient defense made by the dwarves who delved Gundabad long ago. Nobody understood the qualities of stone better than the dwarves of old. And they knew that just the right sound can cause solid stone to split. They use that knowledge to build a defense against any enemy who might force their way past the gates in their home. But Mount Gundabad has been an orc hole for centuries. How did you know about this weapon? I it's been in the hands of the orcs for many a year, but not straight through. I was only a lad when my people fought a great war against the orcs, but my father helped sack Gundabad. He was one of the stone workers who found the weapon. It made a big impression on him, and he told me the tale so many times I was sure I could find the thing and use it against the orcs. But how could you be certain it would still work after all those centuries? <laughs> but we didn't. The whole thing was a gamble. Luckily, it paid off. We would be pleased to speak with Lord Gorin. Just make your way past the door as you see yonder, and you'll find it within. The guards have been instructed to let you pass. <laughs> I suspect I'm the first man to see the inside of these halls. I am certain I am the first elf to do so. Here, sire, are those I spoke of. Allow me to present a kinsman, Farin of Erebor, and also Andriel and Eridan, his companions. We succeeded in our task, and I live to tell of it, thanks only to their aid. You are most welcome here, kinsman, and no less so your companions, be they man, elf, or eagle. Welcome all to Nordenbad, last hollow of the Longbeards in the Grey Mountains. You have returned to me, my son and my oldest friend, whom already I mourned as lost. For this, you will forever have my gratitude and the hospitality of these halls. Know that this is not something lightly given, for never before have we allowed any but our own folk to pass these gates. And no eyes have gazed upon the hidden lake of Azanzaram, save those of our close kindred. And for what you have done, I will gladly lay aside our ancient oath of secrecy. Your warriors struck a heavy blow against the orcs of Gundabad, but the cost was great. These walls of yours are both high and strong. Why not wait for the enemy to spend their strength against them? Were we dealing with the host of Gundabad alone, we would have done just that. We have repulsed many orc attacks in the past, but this time their numbers were far too great. Orcs and goblins have been pouring into Gundabad from every pit and cave in the north. We struck them a heavy blow. But even so, we'll still be hard-pressed if they move against us here. Now you know why my people were at Gundabad. But I cannot help but wonder what brought the three of you there. We were hunting a black-hearted servant of the enemy. He goes by the name of Agendaur. Agendaur. We are familiar with that one. Curse his black heart. He appeared before our gates some weeks past, and called us to parley, in the name of Sauron the Great, so he said. We have sought that one for many days across many leagues. Where can he be found? We cannot say, yet I'm certain he wasn't at Mount Gundabad. The orcs were too easily surprised and slow to respond to our attack. There was no sign of strong leadership there, 
With those flying beasts at his command, he might be anywhere. What did he ask of you? He demanded that we yield ourselves up to the mercy of Sauron. As if there was any mercy in the Dark Lord. He lays claim to Nordenbad, telling us if we turn over our halls and riches without a fight, our lives will be spared, and we will be free to seek a new home elsewhere. Of course, we would have nothing of that. When we defied him, he grew wrathful, threatening us with the fiery doom that overtook our ancestors. Fiery doom? I wonder why he chose such words. I fear he may have allied himself with the dragon Orgast, who dwells in these parts. With such a beast at his command, we would have little hope of resisting him. There are dragons still to be found in the world? I had hoped that Smaug was the last of his kind. Alas, no. There are dragons still to be found in these mountains, and yet more dwell in the wastes beyond. They may not be as great or wicked as was Smaug, but they are large and evil enough. Make no mistake about that. Dragons are wicked creatures, but proud. Could even Agandar command one to serve? Perhaps not on his own account, but if he speaks for the Dark Lord, even Urgast would think twice before offending him. Uh, dragons are wicked creatures, and their greed knows no bounds. Agandar only has to name the right price. Maybe we should go after this dragon before he comes after us. Huh. Destroy Urgast? If only it were that simple. The attack on Gundabad would be a peaceful stroll around the lake in comparison. Hey, if it were so easy to slay dragons, there would be many more dwarves still dwelling in these mountains. Urgost has never taken notice of us before. We rather hoped it would stay that way. They say it does not pay to leave a live dragon out of your calculations if you live there one. We can't let Agendauer have such a beast under his command. Even Imlodris would be no haven against Dragonfire. Where will we find Urgost? You do not lack for courage, I will grant you. Yet we know not where the dragon dwells. No dwarf has discovered his lair and lived to tell of it. Perhaps Radagast knows this secret, or can discover it. Seems there is little that happens in Wilderland that escapes his notice. You speak of Radagast the Brown, one of the Astari, the Order of Wizards. So you know him, do you? We have never met, yet often I have heard him spoken of. He is said to be skilled in the lore of all herbs and beasts, especially birds. Do you know where he may be found? He dwells within the forest of Mirkwood, away to the south. Perhaps your companion Belleram would know where to find him, for it is said that Radagast is a friend to the Lord of Eagles himself. We should travel to Mirkwood. If Radagast knows as much as you say, it is certain to be worthwhile. Indeed. Before you set out, please accept a token of our gratitude. Seek out my steward, Galar. I have instructed him to open our vaults to you. I believe you may find something within that will be of service in the days ahead. Grandsire was the first to enter the caves of this mountain, where he discovered the hidden lake we call Azanzaran. He was awed by its beauty, and led some of his kin here. Slowly, over many long years, with loving hands and careful chisels, we created the halls you see before you. Nordenbad was never rich in gold or jewels, but its beauty would move even the most cold-hearted dwarf. That is why we have remained here for so long. There is not a dwarf among us who would not choose death for exile from our... You are Longbeards? Then you are of Durin's folk, and close kin to Foran. Aye. In 
centuries past, most of our kin called these mountains home. But then the dragons came from the far north. One by one, our halls were lost or abandoned. All but Nordenbad. We alone endured those dark times. And thanks to you, we may hope to endure our current troubles as well. I thank you for your generosity, Lord Gorin. You're a strange-looking creature. You must be the elf I've been hearing about. You look like a stiff wind could blow you over, but I suppose appearances can be deceived. Are you here to buy something? I've an excellent stock of the best Norton Bad craft for it, so speak up. Time's a waste. Are you always this cheerful? Well, let's see. We've got an orc army growing, a dragon hungry for dwarf snacks, and one of Sauron's lieutenants making threats. Pardon me while I break out in a song and dance. Now see here, I need to do some business. So how's about you buy something before I get downright grumpy? Goran sent me to you. He said I should speak with you to receive a token of his gratitude. Yes, yes. He may have mentioned it to me. It was rather too generous of him. Not that I don't appreciate what you did, but how does he expect me to increase our wealth by giving our best work away? Well, here you go. Take your pick. something Are you here to buy something? Now here's a sight. I hear tell there was an elf come to visit. Word of you has spread like a beard on fire. Never seen an elf before. Had no idea your kind could be so fierce. But I hear you hit the enemy hard. Well done. So, how can I help you today? That odor, is that your beard burning? Well, well hard to be a smith without getting a few sparks in your beard. What do you expect when you're working with a hammer and forge and hot metal? <laughs> They've taken to calling me Burry Bird Beard. Used to have a beard down to my belt. Well, shorter is safer. As long as you keep a bucket of water handy, there's nothing to worry about. Dwarves can be a secretive folk, especially when they guard a valuable secret. Could it be that you found Mithril here? Oh, we've no such wealth as Mithril here. Not that I haven't dreamt of finding a vein of true silver. I work iron and a bit of ordinary silver or gold. A few gems here and there. Mostly we hide to escape the notice of the dragons. Bad blood between dwarves and dragons as well, you know. And then there's all the orbs. Ah, but I dream of a day when we could trade for finer goods. I've been working on a silver belt studded with crystal, with a special mount for the gem I crave above all others. The gem that comes from no mine. What sort of gem would that be? Pearls! 
the most perfect and beautiful of precious things. How they glimmer and gleam. I've hoarded a small handful of white pearls, but even those won't satisfy me for this belt. My dream of perfection is nothing less than the fabled Black Pearl. I've heard rumor of them, but I fear I'll never see one. If I should have the good fortune to find one of these Black Pearls, I will bring it to you. Mighty good of you. You'll find me generous should you return. I mean, when you return. Anything else I can do for you? I should be off. Goodbye. Mookwood is a place I prefer to fly over, not into, but we are ready to go. We must hope Radagast can tell us where to find Urghost. Have you ever faced a dragon before? No. That is a risk I have gladly avoided. One does not willingly seek out a dragon, unless there is no choice. Do you fear dragons? Only a fool would not fear a dragon. If Urghost has survived this long, he must be full of the guile and cunning of his kind abominations that they are, and this will make him even more dangerous. But that changes nothing. If we must prevent his alliance with Agandar, then fear must be set aside and the dragon found. We should follow Gorin's advice and seek Urgost's whereabouts from Radagast. You know Radagast well. The Brown Wizard has been a close friend of the Eagles since he first came to Middle-earth and settled into the forest that is now called Mirkwood, even before it came to have that dark name. That was long before I was born, but I have visited with him many times in his home at Rosgabel when I would bring him news from afar. But I have not seen him since he abandoned Rosgabel. Radagast lived there for centuries. Why would he abandon it? He was gone from his home before I could ask. But there has been a growing threat and darkness in the south of Mirkwood. I believe Rosgabel is no longer safe, even for a wizard. But fear not. I know Radagast's favored places in the north of Merlin. We will find him, or I will bring you to a place you are likely to find him at the very least. Then we must travel to Merkwood. We will be ready. No one can help him now, and no one can help you. So 
Well done, my friends. That one will spread his veil of lies no more. Yet I fear this was no chance meeting. If Wolfram was here, it could mean trouble for Radagast. You should press on and find him. What manner of creature is this you have defeated? What a foul stench it has! Who can say? Some beast from an older world, maybe. Bred and twisted by the Dark Lord to serve his most trusted servants. We will find him, but what about you? Are you hurt? The beast did its damage, but not enough to keep me from the air. I will be fully recovered soon enough. The sorcerer said something about a wizard. He must have meant Radagast. But why would Agadour send his minions after Radagast? The brown wizard concerns himself little with the outside world. Yet he has worked against Sauron in the past. Perhaps Agandaur merely wishes to settle an old score, but it seems more likely he seeks to prevent Radagast from aiding his enemies. We should find him. This could mean Agandaur guessed our plan and has struck first. If so, Radagast may be in grave danger. We will continue the search on foot. Should we look for you here once we have found him? No, I must find my companions. They are probably worried about me. Together, we will keep watch from above. Radagast has many friends among the birds of Mirkwood. If you find him, he can send a message to us easily enough. Never have I seen a wood so dense and forbidding. What can we expect to find here? I cannot say for certain. Mirkwood is no place for my kind. We can soar over the great wood, but its secrets remain hidden beneath the trees. The forest has an evil reputation, however. Be on your guard as you search for Radagast. Some of my kin dwell in this wood. I wonder if we might seek their aid. It is true, King Thranduil's people dwell in the forest. But many dark miles lie between here and the Elven King's halls. One might wander for weeks in this part of Mirkwood without encountering an elf. What of the woodmen? I've heard there are some who make their homes in this forest. You speak of the Bjornings. Yes, there are hearty men who dwell on the western edge of Mirkwood. But they are rarely found this far north, and they are wary of strangers, as any who dare to dwell in this wood should be. How far are we from the wizard's dwelling? It is difficult to say for certain. Even the eyes of an eagle cannot pierce the interwoven boughs of Mirkwood, and clearings are few in this wood. We will continue... No, I must find my companions. They are... Very well, but be careful. There may be more of these fell beasts about. I don't like the look of this Mirkwood. I wish our path would have led us elsewhere. Why would Radagast choose to make his home in such a place? They say that Mirkwood was not always like this. It was fair enough before the shadow of the Dark Lord fell over it. That shadow lies here still. There are evil creatures in this ward. Be on your guard. Look, there! War! That's done it. Now the whole forest knows we're here. Let's go. The warg that one hears is worse than the orc that one fears. True, but where the warg howls, there also the orc prowls. Of orcs. Be watchful. The wargs have given away our presence. They don't like this. Keep your eyes open. Here's something I can make use of. Up there, an archer. Take cover. It's an ambush. They seek cover in the undergrowth. We need cover from their arrows.
do that yet. This is just what I needed. <laughs> this will prove useful. Oh, the very thing I need. Let me gather this. Just what I needed. They look like eggs, insect eggs, maybe. But so many, and so large. Servants of the enemy, beware!
Need more time. We must be nearing Radagast's home. Enemy archers! On the high ground! To my side! Aid our friend! Double quick! Take refuge here! I will shield us from their arrows and bolts! peaceful enough. Then what did the sorcerer mean when he said we were too late? Perhaps he was only trying to discourage us. 
a staff on the ground. These woods are thick with the Urukai. Listen, they're all around us. On the hunt for something. We must find him before the orcs do.
spider tracks leading deeper into the woods. And it appears as if they were dragging something. I fear it could be Radagast, but whether he was living or dead, I cannot say. I thank you for my life, friends. I had abandoned all hope before you appeared. I am Glohirin, an elf of the Woodland Realm. It is our custom to be wary of strangers, yet I have never been happier to see unfamiliar faces. We haven't traveled all the way to the Wood Elf Realm, have we? No, the Woodland Realm lays many days' travel to the east. Filthy orcs. I had no idea this part of Mirkwood was so full of them. Orcs can be found throughout Mirkwood, save where my people's realm is maintained. Yet never have I seen so many in this part of the wood. There are separate tribes and companies present as well. Some have come from the Grey Mountains to the north, 
but there are also large and savage Uruks out of Dol Gurdur, far to the south. The enemy prepares to make war in earnest. This bodes ill for the Woodland Realm. Happy to help. I'm Farin, and my friends here are Andriel and Eridan. But how'd you end up in such a tight spot? I am one of King Thranduil's wardens. My companion Galron and I were tasked with scouting this portion of the wood. We found enemies gathering here, but for what purpose we could not tell. We thought to consult with Radagast the Brown, who dwells nearby, but we found the danger grew greater as we approached his home. But what of you? How is it you three are here in Mirkwood? We're here looking for Radagast too, but it seems he's come to trouble. Elf, man, and dwarf seeking a wizard. There is a story here to be sure, but we have no time for tales now. Radagast is likely in grave danger, and so too my friend Galron. Can your people help us in our search for Radagast? No, the Woodland Realm lays many days travel to the east. We can expect no help from there. Where's this Galron gotten to? Alas, I cannot say. We came upon a band of orcs, and while we battled them, spiders began to cast down their lines from the trees above. I was entangled, and the orcs bore me away. I can only hope that Galron escaped a similar fate. Orcs and spiders working together in this manner bodes ill for my people, and more so for Galron. I must find him. I've heard all about the spiders of Mirkwood from my kid, but I've never heard of them working together with orcs. Orcs and spiders are constant foes of my people, but rarely have we contended with both at once. I fear the enemy has made alliance with the Spider Queen, Sinathra, who is rumored to dwell deep within the mountains of Mirkwood. We'll help you find your friend. I see movement in the trees.
Stand back. I'm bringing this wall down. Here, form up by me. Attack! 
Let none escape us! These webs are arranged for defense. We are nearing the spider's lair. Buy something. Well met, my friend. Are you looking for repair? Fortune favored me. I have the pearl you desired. <sighs> Never have my hands held a treasure so glorious. Words alone aren't enough to express my gratitude. Here, take this in return. Some of my finest craft work. Only the best for you.
Trail leads down there. I'm sure of it. The wizard. <sighs> the wizard? No, no, my dears. That is food. Hey. Says the wizard must die. Take him and devour him, he commands. And so I shall. But not yet. Not yet. Let him hang a bit first. Let him await my pleasure. <sighs> Wizard alone is barely a meal for one such as myself. Now, war, war is a face. Carefully. Let him down slowly now. He yet lives. Aye, and he's coming around. Ooh. Radagast, are you well? Oh, what a thoroughly unpleasant experience. I shall have more pity for flies in the future. The spider's venom can be lethal. I have some skill at healing. Let me attend you at once. No cause for concern. It happens I know a thing or two about venoms and poisons. Sinathra's poison could be deadly, but killing prey outright is not the way of such creatures. No, they much prefer to keep their meals alive for a time. <laughs> Just as a farmer might age a cheese to improve its flavor, really. She used only enough venom to keep me quiet. How did you come to be in this bind? Sinathra snatched me. Took me unawares, I'm afraid. I really didn't expect to encounter anything of her sort in this corner of the wood. 
No, not at all. You see, I came here to get away from trouble. Darkness is spreading across Mirkwood. A, a, a darker than usual darkness, I mean. And it's coming from Dol Guldur in the south. Roscobel, my usual home, lies a little too close to Dol Guldur for comfort. So I came here. I have several such retreats. You can never be too prepared, living in Mirkwood and all. But... do I know you? No, Radagast. But you do know me. Ah! Young Bellarum. It's a pleasure to see you. So you are a part of this little party, too? <laughs> it's quite a mixed bag, really. I don't see elves, dwarves, and men rubbing elbows often. Especially not in Mirkwood. <laughs> now add an eagle as well. This is turning out to be a rather extraordinary day, really. All things considered. I am just glad we came in time. My friends and I have a mission, and we came seeking your aid. We're looking for the dragon Urgost, who lives in the Grey Mountains. But we have no time for a lengthy search. We were told you might be able to help us find him. You wish to find a dragon? Oh dear, is that really wise? There was a powerful force here, and it is clear that you were their target. Why does the enemy hunt you? Ah, oh, the enemy never needs a reason to kill and destroy. But if I were to hazard a guess why they were after me in particular, I would say it is because of my talent for gathering and sending news quickly. That could mean they plan to attack our friends nearby. Which means trouble for the Bjornings, the Wood Elves, or both. We should warn them. Oh, you needn't concern yourself with that. As I said, I have a talent for such things. I will make sure our friends are warned. It's the neighborly thing to do, after all. I had heard Mirkwood was home to many spiders, but I never expected this. Are there more of her kind in this wood? I certainly hope not. This was the Spider Queen, Sanathra. I've heard many fearful tales of her from my friends among the forest creatures, but I've never before had the misfortune of encountering her. I'm rather surprised to find her here. By all accounts, she kept her lair in the craggy mountains near Dol Guldur, far to the south. Dol Guldur was a stronghold of the enemy in the past. What can you tell me of it? It's a terrible place. A fortress built upon a bare hill in the south of the forest. Of old, the Dark Lord himself dwelt there. He was driven out some years past, but it seems that evil has returned once more to Dol Guldur. I am told that fell creatures of many sorts are gathering there. Our mission is pressing. Do you know where the dragon dwells? Well, he's a dragon, so I would say the Grey Mountains. Um, yes, this much we already knew. But do you know where in the Grey Mountains? I haven't the foggiest notion, really. What? So we've just been chasing the wind? Ah, now, not so fast. I may not know where Urgos dwells, but I just might be able to find out. But I would need my staff for that, and I, I seem to have mislaid it somewhere. One of your order, Mithrandir, or Gandalf if you prefer, is well known to me. I thought you two would be similar, yet you seem quite different. Do I? <laughs> well, cannot one elf be unlike another, and yet both still be elves? Uh, I suppose there is no one quite like Gandalf, although I sometimes feel as if I should be more like him. Mm, at any rate, I assure you, we are both wizards in spite of our differences. My master, Elrond, has spoken of the Order of Wizards many times, yet still I know little of your origins. Will you tell me what manner of being you are, and from whence you come? That I am forbidden to reveal. Some things must remain a secret, at least for the present. Suffice to say, we are, and think on it no more. We found your staff, and brought it along with us. I knew you would have need of it once we found you. Ah, oh, excellent. Aren't you the clever one? <laughs> Crafty as a fox in your own fashion, too, I can tell. I'm grateful to you. Well then, 
Let's see what we can find out, shall we? My friends might know a thing or two. news for me, little one? Ah. I see, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Very brave of you. Well done, my friend. And there you have it. Uh... Perhaps you could explain further for those of us who do not speak the language of swallows. Oh, you don't? Quite a pity, really. They're rather pleasant little fellows. Always something nice to say. Well, what did this one have to say? Quite a bit, actually. Here, let me show you. Considered my offer. You bargain with what you do not possess, man of the self. I will have your price soon enough. Think carefully before you spurn this offer, dragon. As mighty as you are, you would do well not to offend my master. I did not say I refused. Only that you must first achieve my reward before you can give it. Ah, formality. I go now to take your price, but I will leave men behind to await your answer. Consider well, but not too long. My time and my thoughts are my own to spend. For now. I thought you were off to find a dragon. These woods are filled with enemies. Are you certain you can find your way to safety? <laughs> Don't concern yourself with that. I've lived in Mirkwood for a very long time. I won't be caught off guard again. Where will you go from here, Radagast? Perhaps I will visit my friends in the Wood Elf Realm. Or I might drop in on a few folks I know among the Bjornings. There's even a very nice family of badgers that might take me in. I will have to give it some thought. Your pardon, you said... badgers? Yes, indeed. Oh, I know what you're thinking. How can anyone get along with a group of grumpy old badgers? <laughs> it's true, they're not as amiable as foxes, but they're really quite agreeable once you get to know them. I am certain you are correct. Good luck to you. Wherever you may travel. Sinathra is no more. That was a feat worthy of heroes of the Elder Days. I am honored to have witnessed it. What of the missing Galron? Were you able to find him? Sadly, I was unable to save Galron. I discovered he fell in the same battle in which I was captured. I recovered his war gear from the Orcs, and I wish you to have it. Galron would be pleased to know it was still being used to fight the enemy. I must hasten home to inform my lord of everything that I've learned here. I shall pause only long enough to consult with Radagast. Farewell, Lady of Imladris.
cave swallow has told me where Ogost's lair can be found. I can guide us there when you are ready to depart. We are very close to the dragon's lair. We must now go more cautiously. If Orgost was to catch us airborne, he might lay us low with a single blast of dragonfire. It is best you proceed on foot, while we shadow you from above. I see the ruins of mighty works in the surrounding cliffs. What might they be? I can answer that. What you see are all that remains of the mansions of my kin, the Longbeards. Once, there was a mighty host of dwarves living in these mountains before the dragons came from the northern wastes to plunder our homes. Ah, to have seen these realms in the days of their glory. <sighs> Seems we're always fated to lose the fruits of our labor. Is it true that dragons breathe fire? Legends tell of two kinds of dragons. The great fire drakes whose breath is deadly flame, and the lesser cold drakes who have no fire. I fear Orgost is no cold drake. Are there other dangers in these mountains, apart from Urgost? There are orcs aplenty in the Grey Mountains. But do not forget that Agandar said he was leaving men to await the dragon's answer. We must be prepared to deal with them as well. Do you believe Urgost will be on guard against intruders? I hope it is not so. But the keen senses of dragons are legendary. I fear he will see, hear, or smell us long before we can come to grips with him. Still. If Agandar's minions are hereabouts, it may be that their presence will mask our own. No point in delaying any further. Let's press on as swiftly as we may. Let's hope dragons are less formidable than legend makes them. These are some remnant of the men who served the Witch King long ago.
Dragon's answer. They must be bold to count on a dragon's doorstep like this.
more time. Take refuge here. I will shield us from their arrows and bolts. Here to buy something. It's good to see you. We found more of Durin's folk dwelling in the Grey Mountains. They are few in number, but very valiant. What? Long lost kin in the Grey Mountains? How can that be? How did they escape the scourge of the dragons when all others were destroyed or fled? They have a hidden refuge called Nordenbad. By my beard. When all this trouble is finished, you must show me the way there. I would meet these distant kinsmen and welcome them to trade with Erebor. From what I have seen, I'm certain they would welcome the opportunity to become reacquainted with their kin. But there is still much to do before that day comes. Farewell, Glory. 
Those who venture... That must wait.
were meant to have long lives. Elbereth, that was a close call.
is clear the folk of Nordenbad take pride in their work. Are you here to buy some? Duna died cash.
target! Quickly! Sorry to put you to all that fuss, my friend. Must wait. My friends and I are here to put an end to you! <laughs> Dwarves, your audacity is matched only by your lack of judgment. Maybe we can't beat you, but we'll fight you to our last breath! Nothing of our kind if you think that's true. We are sworn to destroy Agandar. Are you indeed? Maybe we can make a deal. A deal? What sort of deal? Agandar wishes me to join him in his conquest of the North. As a reward, he offers the realm of Nordenbard and all the wealth found there. Ah, we already know about that, Dragon. Why do you think we are here? So, in spite of your brashness and bravado, I see you are not without a measure of resourcefulness. I do not know how you could have learned of Agandawa's offer, but it does not matter. Since you are so knowledgeable, perhaps you are also aware that I have no interest in Nordenbard. What is that dwarf infested bit to one such as I? No, I have my eyes set on a far greater prize. I want the ancient fortress of the Witch King himself, Karn Doom. Karn Doom? Where is Karn Doom? It sits atop the northernmost peaks of the Misty Mountains. Of old, it was the capital of the realm of Angmar, the mighty fortress of the Witch King himself. Who is the Witch King? You are 
woefully ignorant of the events in which you have embroiled yourself, dwarf. The Witch King is the Lord of the Nazgul, Chief Lieutenant of the Dark Lord himself. Oh, him! Well, from what I hear, he's busy down south, so he won't be needing Karn Doom. What's to prevent you from just moving in? Agandaur. He has taken control of Karn Doom. From there, he plans his conquest of the north. If you're so mighty, why don't you just take Karn Doom from Agandaur? Maybe you're afraid of him, huh? No, do not try my patience, dwarf. I fear no man. But Agandaur is a servant of Sauron, and I have no wish to make an enemy of the Dark Lord. You, on the other hand, have already done so. If you would see me remain neutral in this war, destroy Agandaur and turn over Gon to to me. Hmm. I can't believe what I'm about to say, but... All right, Dragon, you've got a deal. Stay out of this war, and Karn Doom will be yours. A wise choice. See that you don't disappoint me. And if you are truly concerned with the fate of Nordenbad, you might wish to return. Agandaur is moving against it, even as we speak. They will need our aid. We must hurry. Oh, yes. By all means, hurry. <laughs> <laughs> indeed what transpired within that cave. But if our friends are in danger, then questions must wait. I will call Armanel and Baranthor, and we will depart at once. glad I am to see you, but it may already be too late. I've only a handful left who can still fight. Then fall back to the upper chambers. Give us what support you can from there. And we will see what we can do against their siege machines. What? I... Your place is with your people, Lord. Go! I... Luck to you all. Fall back! Back to the upper galleries! Fall back! Here they come!
They send trolls against the gate. Come, we will drive them back. Berenthor, to the gate! Beware! Beware! On this battle. Nordenbard is saved. At what cost?
best that we can do. Once again, we of Nordenbad are in your debt. Without your aid, we would not have held them. The enemy is defeated, but at very great cost. What will you do if they renew their attack? Then every dwarf will sell his life as dearly as he may before the end. And I do not think they will return. All their commanders have been slain. All of them? What about Agendauer? Can it be that you got him as well? It would seem he did not consider Nordenbad worthy of his personal attention. We saw no sign of his presence during the battle. So he proves a coward, unwilling to risk himself in battle. Our friend Belaram lies gravely injured. We must help him. I have already ordered my people to bear him into the hall. He will have the best care we can give, for it is certain we owe him our lives. But what of Urgost? You set out to deal with the dragon. Did you find him? We dealt with the dragon, all right, but not the way I'd have liked. We found out Agendaur had promised him Nordenbog. But we offered to give him Agendaur's stronghold, the fortress of Karn Doom. Karn Doom? The ancient fortress of the Witch King of Angmar? Yes. We should have known Agendaur would reoccupy that accursed place. If Orgos desires that black pit, he is welcome to it. But Agendaur will need to be dealt with first. I fear you have paid a terrible price to save your home. Aye. So many good dwarves lost. I do not think we will fight again in this war. Unless in a final stand upon the shores and bridges of Azanzaram itself. We can only hope that Agendaur now believes the price of taking Nordenbad is too high. Was Agendaur in com- It would seem he did not consider- I feel certain he will be found at Kandum. We must seek him there. Such a trek will be long and difficult, and the loss of the eagles means you will need to go on foot. So be it then. For the sake of all free folk, Agendaur must die. I can spare no warriors to send with you. The strength of Nordenbad is all but spent. Yet it would please me if you would take these. They are heirlooms of my house. The greatest works of my people passed down through long generations. Parting with them would be hard, but your fight is our fight. And so I give them freely. Choose what you will, and may it help avenge the fallen. some stranger a pat on the back when my own folk are dying. We fought alone. We always have. What's not bad to you? We stood forward and risked our very lives for you and all your kind. How much more blood would stain the rock of Nordenbad if not for us? And what of the great eagles who died for you? Do you scorn their sacrifice? Does it mean nothing to you? I... I had not heard about the eagles. Hardly, hardly. 
forgive me. I was thinking only of myself and the friends I've lost. Now I see that you've suffered your own great loss. Your names will be sung with honor in these halls, and we won't forget what you've done for us. Pay no attention to me. I'm a cantankerous old fool sometimes. Well, most of the time. Nordenwald is in your debt. What can I do for you? Velarom? Can you hear me, my friend? Andriel. I am within walls of stone, and hear no sounds of battle. Then Nortenbad was saved. Yes, they have withdrawn with heavy losses. How long have I been here like this? Not long. You rest easy now. You've had a hard time of it. Where are Berenthor and Arminel? It pains me to bring you this news, but our friends were among those who fell in battle. We will never forget their valor, and shall always honor their sacrifice. Your words are kind, and I thank you for them. But my friends are dead nonetheless. What is more, they died under my command. It is a heavy burden to bear. But what of Agandar? Was he too slain in battle, or does he yet live? Agandar wasn't here. I'll wager he's still skulking at Karn Doom. Must seek for him there. Arminel and Barenthal must be avenged. Bellarom, your courage is great, but courage alone cannot heal wounds. We have to go on, but you must remain here. <sighs> yes. It is clear I cannot accompany you now, and if you delay, others may die. I will not be responsible for that. Go, with my blessing upon you, friends. Farewell, great heart. We look to see you soaring over the mountaintops upon our return. Must rest. Gather my strength. Take my hand. You needn't be doing me any favors. 
The mountain I can't climb hasn't been built. Well, we won't be going back that way, I'm thinking. But you were correct, Eridan. There are no guards watching this route. Small wonder. We cannot count on it remaining unwatched for long. Come, let us find a way into this fortress. There must be a lever to raise this gate. There must be a lever to raise this gate.
vicious. Hackenthal's beast. You, you will not escape us that way again. The dwarves of Nordenbad promised to see you restored to full health. Yet here you are, and clearly injured still. Why were they not true to their word? Do not fault the folk of Nordenbad. They cared for me diligently. But when I felt strong enough to fly, I set out after you. I am here against the strongest council of Gorin and Nordry. But they are friends. They would not constrain me when my heart led me on. This is madness. You cannot continue to fight while so badly hurt. Please, you must leave while there is yet time. It is not my way to abandon friends in the face of danger. And much less so, great-hearted friends. Beg me to leave them. Since you will not be persuaded, will you at least promise to hold back from battle until our need is very great? There is nothing to be gained from spending your life without cause. It shall be as you say. Now let us go on. The enemy will be upon us if we delay any further. Must be close. Stay together. Agenda. Can it be the same? Three lackeys who hid behind the elves at Fornost. You? You are the ones who have followed in my wake, upsetting my plans. Yes, and we have thwarted you at every turn. All you have done is raise my ire. Because of your insolence, my conquest of the North shall be all the more cruel. Such threats only strengthen our resolve, monster. Come down and face us, Agadour! Witness, fools. I learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. I am Sauron's greatest weapon in the North. You rush only to your death.
Ranch.
Could you know that? It is true. I can feel it. Like a great weight has been lifted from my heart. I feel it too. He's done it. Frodo's really done it. The ring has been destroyed. Be that as it may, you must still honor your oath to me. Gone Doom is mine. We are true to our word, Dragon. You are welcome to it. Just see you mind your manners, old worm. And we'll have no quarrel. <sighs> Tis a long way home from here, for each of us. Let us make for Emlodris. You will find no better place to rest and recover. You have but to say the word, and we will press on. What say you, Farin? Should we go to Riverdale? A little rest sounds good. <laughs> 